come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. (laughs) Glad we have that sorted. And tonight tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. Fuck. No. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Michaela. What did we watch tonight? We did our patriotic duty we and watched did. an 80s slasher that was released in theaters. Ty West Maxine. Ooh. Yes. Yes. From the so like, year a, this. like an 80s slasher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. From 2024. Mm-hmm. And like you said, Ty West. So directed yes. by Ty West. Written by Ty, Ty West. West. Produced Edit- by. Edited by Ty West. Ty West. Yes. Edited by Ty West. <laughs> produced by Ty West. Another person. And Mia Goth. Yes. Who stars in this movie. Mm-hmm. Is this the first Mia Goth movie we've done on the Freak Show? Yeah. Because we didn't do Cure for Wellness, we didn't do Suspiria, the Nymphomaniac, no Deadpool, didn't do, or Dead, nope. or what, mm-hmm. whatever the. Wow, she's got a lot we could do though. I know. Right. I think it's also the first Ty West movie that we've done. Oh yet. wow! Okay, because we never did not been done. We, yeah. So we need to talk about Ty West. Yeah. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Wow. Damn. Okay. Right. Um, so this guy's an interesting cat, indie filmmaker, right? Mm-hmm. And kind of started off. Um, with the roost, you remember the roost? Nobody no, saw. The I roost. feel like you just no. dislodged a faint memory. I have it has Tom Noonan in it as like a Ooh. late night horror host who's showing this movie called The Roost about these kids who go into a, a barn and there's I don't know if they're a vampire bat. They turn people into there's bats. I've in never the, seen. Oh my barn. god! And Tom Noonan's in this. Yeah, it's like a I favorite. feel like I, I feel like we need to watch. Oh this. my god! Yeah, this sounds incredible. Tom Newton in horror is like not done enough, in my opinion. So that man is yeah. so terrifying. Because he <laughs> was in later. Ty West cast him in House of the Devil, and House of the Devil is really the movie I think that launched Ty West because he had done Definitely. another one yep. in between there called Trigger Man, which was pretty good that mm-hmm. I saw. And then House of the Devil became like an indie darling and a uh, oh. you know, much talked about. Um, hit in at least in horror right and what is it was the in, same year as house of the devil uh cabin fever 2 spring fever oh, oh wow yeah, that's right the one we should actually be talking about <laughs> let's be real <laughs> that's right that was that was so that was a year where his career could have gone one of two ways oh boy yeah <laughs> yeah it could have gone not great for him yeah. and uh i want to say house of the devil was the first collaborate maybe the other ones no, i think that was the first collaboration he did with uh, indie producer and director Larry Fessenden because mm-hmm. okay. they're glass eye picks. So, um, so this is kind of like so it's a New York uh, film circle. Mm-hmm. These guys all know each other and help each other out on their movies. Mm-hmm. They're in the, their movies and all that. Yeah. Ty West was an actor also mm-hmm. in Your Next. Remember, That's but that was right. Adam Wingard, uh-huh. right? Right. Who's now the Godzilla guy, and we're never going to get him back. Uh, <laughs> That's he fine. shit the bed I so don't wing bad. Godzilla. <laughs> With uh, Blair Whitney, when he did Blair Witch. Yeah. That it was okay, like, yeah. No, I don't, I don't want bust. him to come back to horror. <laughs> yeah. He can stay with the Godzilla movies yeah, as far as I'm concerned. That, I'm not yeah, losing anything. Yeah, but he made the guest, and, and you're next. Yeah, I mean, yeah the guest is good. Mm-hmm. You're next. Mm-hmm. I could... Uh, 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 ready or not is my you're next. Okay. Let's put it that way. I only have room in my heart for one of them. I'll take Ready or Not. Okay. Huh. Or not. Okay. Yeah. That's how. That's I, something that's how I'm I, gonna have to think about. That's how I pinned it down. Yeah. Because I think I. S- ooh, I'm listening to your next ones. I can't remember which one I saw first. Probably yeah. your next. But no, mm-hmm. Ready or Not is my your next. Mm-hmm. Well, I do like that. Ty West is. Um, he's in that situation is that where our team Edward, Team Jacob. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I'm Team Ready or Not. Did you <laughs> see, anybody see the Innkeepers? Yes. Now, see, no. I heard a lot about it when it was coming out, but I never saw it. It didn't. I liked it. Like, was it good? Yeah. What's, what's it about? Out, if you can give it like vague, it's these two people who um, are looking after this in that I can't remember if it's about to close, but it's supposedly haunted. And then they're like final days, ghost yeah. hunter kind of, you know, like, oh, we're going to do the thing right. about the. I mean, you're saying things I like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was it was good. And it was okay. I mean, I think the movie that he did after um, House of the Devil and somewhere in there, he made a movie with John Travolta <gasps> called in a Valley of Violence, which was a Western. I remember that. I'm sorry, okay. what? Okay. Yes. Oh, my God. You're unlocking a memory. Yeah. Right. Well, the only reason I saw it was uh, because no. it was a Ty West movie. It sounds West like we movie, need to do a lot of Ty West movies on this Ethan show. Ethan Hawke. 
Yes. That's why oh, I remember. I, 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 I didn't remember know. I forgot. Tra- is it Travolta's in it? Yeah. He is. Mm-hmm. I remember Ethan Hawke in the trailer. Oh my Travolta. God. And Karen Gillan is also in this? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Looks like we got a. Yeah. I have to go back and see some Tasa Farmiga West and James Ransom from the It It Chapter Two that uh, was yeah. also in this. I remember, Toby Huss. I remember, but I remember Who showed up being in Maxine? Yeah. like thrilled with it. But I mean, it was an interesting depart. So like, mm-hmm. his career starts indie, has a kind of defining indie horror movie with House of the Devil, makes mm-hmm. some more horror movies, and then <laughs> is like, okay, I'm gonna go do branch out into westerns. Mm. So I guess my question, since you're looking at his filmography, yes. did he go from in a valley of violence to X, which is he good. Went too well. He, in between He's all done of this, so much TV, TV in between like Screen horror series, TV. Yeah. Wayward Pines, which I believe was the M night Shyamalan yep. show on yeah. Fox. The exorcist TV sh- series. Oh, yeah. did he? Which yeah. I hear is good. Like, like he did a lot of TV, but yeah, the next film is X. So he's making There's connections in, in Hollywood then, mm-hmm. yeah. right? With all yep. the TV stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. X to me is important because it's an indie horror movie that got a theatrical release and mm-hmm. then it became a hit. Yeah. And now has spawned <laughs> two sequels. Yeah. Now, which is kind of surprising. Not only got a theatrical release, but got one like post COVID. I, I, you know, like, cause that, that you remember when we thought why. theaters weren't going to open again, yeah. you know, and then, yeah. And then X comes out and does so well. That be, be, may yeah. be the reason why, because they were just like, we haven't had anything in production forever because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Like, what do we got? Let's put it in the theaters. Mm-hmm. Not to say it wasn't worthy of right. it at that point, but I think that may have given it. But like, Hollywood push. tends to sleep on movies yeah. like that. But it's yeah. just, yeah, yeah, I guess like my thought is if I'm like a Hollywood big shot, right. And I'm planning my schedule coming out of COVID, I'm going to put the things like I know make money out. Right? Right. So, like, I guess they had faith and they were right, but yeah. that it would do well. Right. So, yeah. but it's just weird because it's so much about porn that I'm surprised it was <laughs> it was was as well received as it was. I think they do a lot in desperation. They'll they'll put stuff like give it a shot, go. Plus, he's yeah, got yeah. he's got a a strong enough history. Right, they'll give him yeah. that chance. Right, and right. Considering the. I think people were just really excited to go back to the movies. There's right. that, and also, but considering um, the. I'll say quote unquote star power that mm-hmm. was in it because I mean I don't remember what Jenna Ortega's popularity was at the time that X came out. Twenty two. We, scream. Scream. we had Scream. We had Scream yeah, at that yeah. point. Scream, but, so yeah. That, yeah. but she yeah. hadn't been in she Wednesday. Been in Wednesday yet. Yeah, hadn't been no. in Wednesday yet. No, but she, but like I knew who she was. Right. You know, yeah. like oh okay, she's in this. So it seemed right. like it kind of had that. You know, it cast. I don't know. It had. Uh, it had Britney. Britney, Britney Snow? Snow. Yeah. And Martin Cuddy. Henderson. And our, he was in the Ring, right, or mm-hmm. the remake of the Ring. He was, yeah. and so it was years mm-hmm. after. But he's the older guy. He's mm-hmm. wasn't he the one making the movie in X. Think the so? filmmaker. It's been so long. Yeah, yeah, it's been yeah. Awesome. I've seen X. <laughs> so, I mean, we're probably going to talk about spoilers from X and its sequel, Pearl. Now, mm-hmm. that okay, so that right, so X, I mm-hmm. remember going into it, going like, okay, here's this kind of '70s grimy, you know, horror movie. Uh, it has like so they're they're going to make a porno movie on a farm and it's going to be like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre yep. vibe, right? Mm-hmm. Texas was, Porn Star Massacre. The mm-hmm. Texas Porn Star Massacre. And I laughed when that they pulled that <laughs> newspaper like, that's up. Good, that's good. <laughs> so wait, we've all seen X. Yes, we've yeah, all seen been, X. Yeah, it's been a while, but yes. yeah. And thoughts on X was good. Yeah, I better it's good. than good. It's we'll good. say good. I'll say yeah, good. I, good. I think it's good. I I don't have issues with it really. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but at the end of that movie, there were two things that shocked the shit out of me. Was it that casting of yes. the old lady? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Which, can we ruin that? Or we can yeah, it's been long enough. Yeah. Yeah. Spoilers we, we, yeah, for, the, for X. Yeah. I don't We're think you're of... watching Maxine and coming to this podcast unless you've seen X. Okay. Right. But who knows? But yes. Mia Goth. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't Until know either. Until the, the credits rolled, and yeah. then it was like, holy fuck. In old not, lady oh, prosthetics. Yeah. yeah. So she played two roles mm-hmm. in that movie. She you molested know. herself. <laughs> but yeah. that makes it better for me, knowing <laughs> that she molested herself and not another Same. actor molested her. Same. It actually made well, the movie... Somebody, well, somebody double. molested well, a dog. <laughs> right, double, yeah. but like, I... Like, I got to say, Mia Goth is a braver person than me, because the stuff she goes through in some of these movies, I'm like, good God, woman, you huh? like... She must really want to be famous because she's willing she to do some. Scene. Yeah, because she yeah. is like. Ugh. That's kind yeah. of the the feeling I get on Mia Goth. Like mm-hmm. she is um, taking really risky movies. Yeah, for, she like, was in Infinity Pool, wasn't right. she? Yes. Yeah. With a what? Infinity, Infinity Pool. Pool. That's what I was trying. Yeah, to think she's of, yeah. been like 
I love how- But I think she's doing Maxine. She's like, I want to be memorable. I yeah. Be remembered. But I mean, she's <laughs> done so shot. many weird movies, though. Right. Like, one of the first movies she's did was Nymphomaniac, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. She, she's always that. done. And then, yeah, she's in the Suspiria remake. I always recognized her just because she'd never had eyebrows, you know? So yeah. I was like, oh, it's that right. girl. Yeah. I think I first eyebrow. saw her, it was The Cure for Wellness. Okay. Dane she's DeHaan Suspiria? movie. Yeah. 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 She does yeah. kind of look like the lady version of Dane DeHaan. Yes. So at the end of X, right? So the first shock is Mia Goth played two parts. And you're like, mm-hmm. oh my God. And then at the end of it, there was, uh, if you sat through the credits, right, right. there was a trailer for the prequel, Pearl. It's like coming out in a couple of months. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> and it's got Mia Goth in it yes. playing the old lady character from X, but right. in the 1930s. It says 1918, according to... 1918. Which like... Man, how often do you see any movie set in that time that isn't like a war movie? Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. And it had, but I guess this kind of goes to what Ty West looks to be doing with these movies. Mm-hmm. It's like their movies about the movie industry, mm-hmm. you know, because kind of, yes. right? Because each one of them has a style that's inspired by the time that they're, the, the, the time period that they're set in. Mm hmm. So Pearl it has a very, it's like a Technicolor epic, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, on a very low budget because they yeah. shot it. What was it? It was like they finished X. So they had the barn from X and they they were in New Zealand and they built it and they were stuck there because of COVID. Mm. And so they're like, well, what can we do to reuse this set while we're here and just get two movies out of this set? And so they wrote... Pearl, Mia Goth and Ty West came up with the idea to do the prequel and then shot it during COVID, which like. I feel like you can tell there's definitely like not a lot of other people usually in that movie, but I think yeah. it works given the story it's trying to tell mm-hmm. because this, the story is that she's like an unhinged, unreliable narrator. So like, it, I think it works to that and movie. I love, I love that story. I feel like it's, so, I love Pearl <laughs> and I feel like the making of it is so resourceful. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. What can we do with this barn during COVID? Right. And they did it. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, I, I wonder if this was, uh, um, these three movies, I wonder if they were in his head the entire time. If 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 making X developed, I think making X it developed yeah. because it doesn't seem. It seems like every time that you hear it, you know, the story yeah. is like we did X, and then we're sitting around, and we were still talking about, you know, we're into the psychology of Pearl, right. and then we were like, what would she have been like? And then boom, there's a movie. There you go. Yeah. But what I like about um, that is if Mia Goth is writing, you know, her mm-hmm. own character. For Pearl, Pearl is actually the one where it seems like she got to write herself these extremes of, um, you know, that she could perform in mm-hmm. yeah. and be like showcase way places. out there. Mm-hmm. There's showcases, but there's also, again, this kind of uh, like fearlessness to her or risk because yeah. like that movie ends on a shot, which is not glamorous. No. For her, where you're like, mm-hmm. okay, she's got a scary fucking face. Yes. <laughs> you know? Because there's it just frozen in like this smile yes. for like... I don't know, like three minutes or something. Isn't it crazy that she has a face that works across like time frames, right? Yes. <laughs> like her face blends into every decade so well. It's she looks like a different person too, depending on how her hair is styled mm-hmm. and stuff. It's crazy. Even yeah. in, in this one, Max. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She puts some one. wigs on in this movie, and it takes me a minute. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it really like, oh, is she's like Betty Draper now. Mm-hmm. These are like a showcase for Mia Goth, you know. And you're like, what is she going to do next? I mean, I don't know, but I mean, mm-hmm. these are like the things that you know get you noticed and saying like you know this woman can do this range of stuff mm-hmm. yep um so and that's showcased very well in the opening of maxine mm-hmm. all right so to get us to maxine <laughs> mm-hmm. pearl mm-hmm. was a woman in the in the eight in 1918 mm-hmm. and her whole focus is she she sees like a movie I she's think, a for the star yeah colin she, she's a star <laughs> She wants to be a yes. star. Very yeah. bad. Yeah. I'm a big, bright, shiny star. Yeah. yeah. And that doesn't really work out for Pearl. No. Because we know that in X, Pearl's life, uh, she eventually gets old and these kids are making a porno movie on her uh, uh, property. Mm-hmm. And I think to her, it's the idea that like, uh, you you know, times had changed and sexuality was actually now being, you know, uh uh, it's a movie mm-hmm. and she is like i missed it yeah mm-hmm. yes <laughs> you know now i'm old and yeah. so i hate them all and so yeah she starts killing them all okay so yeah. then you have the younger girl and that's maxine mm-hmm. minx mm-hmm. um i don't remember her 
story where she came from, but I remember at the end of that movie, there's an Easter egg about mm -hmm. her past. I at the end of I X. don't remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at the end of X, I think when the investigators have come in, right, and mm -hmm. they're cleaning up the mess or whatever. Mm -hmm. One goddamn whatever horror movie, whatever that guy says. Yeah. yeah. Point, yeah, yeah. goddamn horror picture yeah. is what he says, yeah. <laughs> is that, yeah, yeah. Isn't that like, like horror picture. It's yeah. bookended. They, it starts with like. Yeah. It starts with them coming the, in on it. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. At the end of X, there's it like the camera zooms in on a television and there's a report of a missing girl. Mm -hmm. And it says that she is the uh, daughter of a preacher mm -hmm. and that she's run away or missing and people are still looking for her. Okay. It's not connecting her to the events. It's just like in other news. Just randomly. You know. mm -hmm. Okay. But that actually works. It makes Maxine make more sense. Yeah. Because yeah, so, yeah. I was wondering if any of that, uh, having not seen X in a while, if any of that. Came mm -hmm. from there. Mm -hmm. Anything I in Maxine came from being there. Me, so that's why I need to see X again. Does mm -hmm. she talk about her um, upbringing or her past? I don't recall, but I remember yeah. that scene at the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and so now here it is, 2024, and we have the third part of the trilogy. Slash 1985. Mm -hmm. And we're going to spoil this movie. So. We're going to spoil yeah. the show. Yeah, stop movie. now if you haven't seen it and don't want to be ruined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why would you set the movie in 1980? It's 84, 85? 85. 85. Because 85. it's cool. Because it's a great year. Because it's, it's fucking, it's fucking cool. cool. <laughs> it's a great year. And it's a cool it, year to be in Hollywood. Because the 80s were just the best. Yeah. They were. Well, they had our We're finding music. out more and more. <laughs> Dude, the soundtrack of this movie is awesome. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, we got Pat, uh, was it Pat Benatar? Mm -hmm. Um, self control. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, Saint Almost Fire. Yeah, Saint Almost yeah. Fire. Um, the scene. There's some Frankie goes to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's a lot of. And there's that that one song from Pretty in Pink is in this. And oh, there's just there's some good ones. But before we get to 1985, there's a little cold cold open. Oh, yeah. oh right. That is important. So we open on like a slide reel. And it says mm -hmm. 1959. It's clearly a young Maxine Minx and her dad's narrating mm -hmm. and telling her and kind of putting this idea in her head that she needs to like be the best at all costs. Right. And yeah. in this context, he's talking about her replacing him, I guess, and becoming a preacher. Or get, she, something about getting the top of the church, he says. Yeah. yeah um, the star of the church. The star of the church. Which and in, that line in and of itself, I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. The star of a church. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that should tell you a lot. Yeah. Cause he's like an evangelical, <laughs> one of these big performance yeah, yeah. Uh, guys who probably ran mm -hmm. like tent revivals similar yeah. to, yes. yeah. You know, uh, what the guy in the last the exorcism, in, yeah. or mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, or yeah, Marjo Gordner, Marjo yeah. Gordner, yeah. and <laughs> she's gr that actually, it is the Marjo Gordner, <laughs> oh, she's yeah. the Marjo she's, Gordner, yeah, she, okay, <laughs> and she's, he, she's like a prodigy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he teaches her their like mantra, which is, I will not accept a life I do not deserve, yes. but she, you has to say it meaningfully, otherwise, mm -hmm. it won't come true, yes. so. Um, and then, yeah, then we cut to 1985, and just like X and Pearl sliding door opens and the movie starts but this time it's a movie studio door instead of a barn door. Mm -hmm. Did you guys notice that? Yeah. Is I was it, like, does it yes. happen in all three? It's, yeah, it happens in all three. Oh, wow. Yeah, it happens in this one and then she comes and walks through and sits down. Yeah, it's yeah. great. And I was like, yay, door symmetry. <laughs> so what, was, what year uh, X took place, I think, in it's, like 74? Right. Something, something like that. that. She says she's 33 in this movie. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so, Which didn't like the line that came with that. That made me feel depressed. <laughs> right. And she mentioned like being 33 in porn is, is just like your age. Oh, Aging like said? bread, not wine. Well, yeah. Yes, there it is. Yeah. That is a great line. And I was like, damn, I just turned 34. I guess I'm fucking <laughs> rotted according to this You're movie. done, Michaela. Yeah, done. It's over. Yep. So what has she been up to in the intervening years? Uh, she's a famous porn actress and a successful one because she has like a nice apartment. She has drives a Mercedes convertible. Yep. Yeah. She has she had red bottom shoes at one point. I was like, okay, she's loaded. Right. I dig yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And, and she's like, doing good. And like everywhere she goes, like people know who she is. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. like a, like love your work. She's a famous porn star before the internet. So that yeah. means like yeah. people have to go to a theater or get tapes from the video yeah. store to see her. Like mm -hmm. that takes a lot of work to be a famous porn star pre-internet, I feel like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Much more work than it does today. <laughs> well, they had conventions back in the day. Yeah. True. Yes. True. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go on. <laughs> Just go watch Boogie Nights. Mm -hmm. Um Aww. So the movie, this one, since it takes, pl takes place in the 80s, mm -hmm. is 
going very heavy on an 80s affected style. Yep. It has the coolest title sequence I've seen in it a long really time. It really does. That it's font good is It's like it's got the, that 80s brush script font. But that is also the Axel F font, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> like, I saw the F in one of the things. I'm like, well, Hollywood that's the F in Axel F. So it makes tell. sense. Yeah. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It's, but it, it is cool. Like, yeah. It is it's like, got like a slight like rainbow shimmer to it. it yeah. It's like Miami oh, Vice. It's good. And the like, the, like that feel. the fake film grain effect on this oh, movie, so and right. like and there's a ripple in, it, 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 looks, in the it looks fake in certain okay. parts, but I, I don't know. know if he actually went and shot it on. I, I'll look it up. Or... I don't think so, but um, oh no, I'll bet that was oh, that looks yeah. digital. That's, digital. Yeah. That's put but it's, it's a nice digital effect. <laughs> but did you guys notice that the color tinting seemed much more realistic to the '80s than like anything else? It did, yeah. Like yeah. in recent like, memory, like it's not all neon. It's like pastel washed out with neon like. Like saturation, like and, it felt. Yeah, it, it's there in certain places, but again, it's not it's overpowering. Like, acid like wash some, film. <laughs> yeah, like some people are doing today. They're just like fucking brightness and full yeah. saturation. She, there's everything. a scene yeah. with Kevin Bacon later. We'll get to, but like the color in that scene was like perfectly that that like '80s beige and like light blue yeah. and yeah. like that like that all has the kind of smoke stain tinge to it because there's a lot of smoking in this there movie is, too. There. I took note of that this Thank time. God. Yeah. yeah, but it's also it's like it, it's like a. a darker version of everything yeah yeah everything seems darker yeah. i think that yeah. but even like in it's you know it's like we think of like the 80s and you mentioned like axel f and these other 80s movies but this one's going for like the, it's like giving an 80s movie sheen to like the the grimier yeah. side of how but i guess we yeah. did see those movies mm-hmm. yeah. um because specifically like angel a- came to yeah, mind angel came Big to mind. Angel motivation yeah. <laughs> like, you know, especially, squad especially, and, especially yes especially when it comes to kevin bacon kevin bacon's yeah. in this movie yeah Especially Kevin Bacon's character feels like he is from Vice Squad and Angel. Mm. Like yeah. he fits. Kevin Bacon has aged into that. He's got that old man run in this movie, which I <laughs> no, love so I think much. Kevin, Kevin Bacon is having so much fun. So in this movie. much fun. He's like he's got a very specific walk, a very specific run. Like he's yeah. he's having fun. In this he's movie. having a moment too because yeah. I think yeah. I saw that he's in Axel F and he's in this, and they oh. both came out I think the same weekend. Yeah. This one seemed like he was more. You know, sometimes you get those uh, actors get those roles where it's like you get to go and, you know, just act weird or mm-hmm. you get to do it. Like at some point he actually had like the Jack Nicholson. The, the he does get the Chinatown. Yeah, he has the Chinatown. Uh, yeah. First yeah. Thing I I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. He has two gold teeth. Yeah. You know, like, th- yeah. On uh, his he canines, you get to relish. Yeah. Those, he does. He, gets you know. to, he lives in it. He he um he, he, he stews in his own water. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. And as disgusting as that sounds, it applies yeah. to it his character. All of the dialogue flows out of his mouth like molasses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like he's just hanging around in his own juices. Yeah. We say he's, he's a private investigator. Yeah. Right, right. right. He's the well, dick, say, before he we says. get too much into this, the title yeah, sequence yeah. is important for setting up yes, the, the movie, sorry, I yeah, think. Because yeah. like we've talked about before how a good title sequence is supposed to like get you acclimated to the atmosphere of this movie. Yes. It's exactly what this title yes. sequence does. Like yep. this title sequence serves that purpose, and I need to uh, like us as a society to embrace this again because <laughs> yeah. it, it gets you have news clips the, of the night stalker yeah. you have the satanic TV footage, panic, yeah, satanic panic. like stuff. it really it literally gives you the cliff notes of what's happening in the culture at the time yeah so like sets the scene it's a show don't so tell bad. you know yeah it's a show don't tell yeah. i love it so it's solid mm-hmm. yep. the night stalker richard ramirez has obviously terrorized uh, los mm-hmm. angeles we're saying this is set while night stalker is right night stalker's yes. the backdrop yeah. of this yeah. movie yeah, yeah. yeah. Which so there is a lot of mm-hmm. uh, oh yeah great Love yeah. are we mixing you know is is uh is she gonna end up running into him i guess is the idea of the, the trailer yeah. kind of gave us yeah. the idea of uh that he's going to be stalking her mm-hmm. friends. Um, okay, so the setup, I guess, is Maxine now having conquered uh, the porn industry, right? Yeah, <clears throat> she wants to be bigger than that. Although we say, yeah, because bigger yeah. than the porn industry, she still has to uh, supplement her income by performing at like peep show booths. Yeah, or which is, that, like, she does. Choice, is it weird or? that those make me kind of nostalgic? Like, put a quarter <laughs> in. Like, I love that. <laughs> I love the lo-fi nature of the it. The lo-fi you know nature saying? of that type of entertainment. Yeah, yeah. It's like you just sit down, put a... I'm sorry, this bitch is only getting a quarter for this? This does yeah. not seem right. like no. a good system. And, well, but, yeah, but, if she gets that whole quarter, for like 30 seconds, yeah, but and then still, you know, keep putting yeah. right. more. Yeah. No, my favorite, when we were watching this, my favorite was when you walk into the theater... There was a dude mopping in the background, and Sean leans over and he goes, the, "What doesn't?" He's like, "This place <laughs> like, doesn't." He yeah. goes, 
this place in itself doesn't gross me out. The fact that there's always someone mopping. mopping. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the gross thing. The jizz mopper. I, right. Whatever's going on there, I don't care. It is what it is. The guy constantly mopping is just like, yeah. that's what makes it gross. There's a couple background actors like that. I noticed in the, the, <laughs> my second watch this time that there's a scene in the video, a slash adult toy store later, where you see a customer in the background shaking like with two hands, a giant dildo while they're talking. <laughs> I never noticed that the first time I watched it. So like, he does that shit on that's purpose. Funny. And it's so funny. That's, that's really funny. funny. Like you just see the silhouette of it. Right, that's what you just want. Yeah. Yeah. Layers away yeah. from the camera. You yeah, your star here. You got a background here. And you got some guy shaking a dildo yeah. way back there. It's but like he was like, trying to make it. sure. Like you know how like when you knock on like a melon to make sure it's ripe. It oh, felt yeah. like he was doing right. something. You have like to shake that. a dildo yeah. to make sure it's <laughs> stable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The same thing. That's how you know it's good. You'll right. never <laughs> smack a watermelon the same way again. Does her roommate? Is it? Does she live with Moses Sumney? I think they're just friends. They're just friends. He works at the video store. Building. Same, yeah, the, like the video store is in the same store building. Like she lives next above it. Door. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Because yeah, at one point they like watch a movie together, and when they like fall asleep, and he wakes up and he says he's going home. Yeah. Okay. So okay. he doesn't live there. And yeah. the video store scene, we should say, is shot like a Brian De Palma or Dario Argento movie. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. like leather creaking. There's a guy comes in. Oh, we don't know who he is mm-hmm. in sound, a leather trench coat and mm-hmm. watches her in the peep show. The booth. sound bothered me more than most things in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like the, just, the, the leather. Sound, sound? It's, yeah, that oh, leather God. squeezing, and that then they add the so wood much. into it. Love it. Yeah, it was, that, that's what makes you feel. It and was stuff fantastic. Like this. It really bugged me. <laughs> so Maxine, so she has, she's trying to be an actor. She works at, at the peep show booth at night, and then. Uh, porn during the day at the, uh, the landing strip. <laughs> it's a great, right, a great yeah. title. Oh, uh, not uh, even the shot like, of the plane going over it's while she walks airport, in. Yeah. Yes. Right. By the uh, and whatever the door she goes in. What is the flight crew? The flight crew. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I loved it. I love that. It's a great set design. Yep. And so like, good. That, that's, it shouldn't be yeah. this hard to fuck me. Is right. what her roommate says <laughs> right. when she comes back into the dressing yep, room. Yep, because we walk into a porn being Very filmed. Funny. Yeah. They, I love when like, she. Hi, Maxie. I know yeah. they're in the middle of filming and she's getting fucked and she's like, "Hi, Maxie." Yes, <laughs> that was funny. Um, and then she sits down at her dressing table and opens a ceramic goose. Oh yeah! Oh my god! That this is full of the most cocaine I've ever seen. The cocaine ever. Was I'm like my mother um, held cookies in that thing. I, yeah. yeah, and then she I takes the tiniest spoon into the yeah. big pile. Um, so, I looked at Michaela's like, "What? You don't have a cocaine goose?" Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I guess twenty four seventy five cocaine <laughs> goose. <laughs> if we did a cocaine bear, we can do a cocaine, cocaine goose. Yes, goose. I mean that might be more. It might be worse. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be like a more vicious yeah. attack. Honestly, it, yeah. I like this. Yeah. So it's, it's the eighties. So she's at Rock Valley College. Right, that's what I was thinking. She's always doing cocaine bumps. I mean, X was like that too. They were doing coke a lot in X. It starts with them doing it in that movie. Yeah. But, and uh, so she does an audition at the beginning of the movie when she walks through the barn doors. Yeah. Isn't she fucking kills it? She kills it. And she tells everyone so as well. I, oh yeah! I fucking nailed it. <laughs> you just might as well go home. I, yep. I she changes it. her accent and yeah. everything. It's one of those like if you write the movie for yourself, you're yep. writing to your strengths. Yep. Um, she's trying to get cast in a low budget horror movie, The Puritan but, Two. Yes, the, a the sequel to something yeah. that had been pretty big. Yeah, at, at that yeah. point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one has a woman director, so yes. it's played by Elizabeth Debicki. Love her, love yes. her, love this, great. Yeah. love her in this. She's great. Yeah. So <laughs> her role in this, right? Because she's one of the main yep. characters who shows up throughout the movie, is kind of like mentorship. Yes. She is trying to guide Maxine because I guess they, you know, based on the audition. They're going to give her a shot in this movie. Yeah, but she's, and, and she's come from an area of just like, look, you're a woman getting into this. It's hard. I know yeah. it's hard. I'm, I so am where I am. So don't fuck it up. So don't fuck it up because they will take any excuse for you mm-hmm. to not be here. I will also take any excuse to get you off this if you are not going to be at my level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the fact that she's British just adds to the whole thing. Of and like, so, so tall. Like, I'll fucking listen she's to you. She's so right? tall. So I tall. So yeah. much. Mm-hmm. The actual name of uh, the, the, the woman who directed uh, Slumber Party Massacre. Oh, yeah. Amy. Yeah. Crap. Well, I'll, look it up, I'll, look it up, I'll look it up. But I mean, there were women making horror movies yes. oh, back, yes. back then. Because mm-hmm. I think even, you know. I mean, Pet Cemetery was directed. Mary yeah. Lambert. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Catherine Bigelow did mm-hmm. Near Dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, for slasher movies, uh, you know. Um, oh, man. I should know her name. You should, Colin. <laughs> God damn you. <laughs> it has escaped me. <laughs> But and I guess, did she do strip to kill? Also, anyway, she diversion. Did, this uh, character is Amy the, Holden Jones. Uh, Amy Jones. Okay, Amy Jones. Go. Yep. 
So there were actual women making horror movies mm-hmm. back in, yes. in the 80s. Um, she uh, serves as this kind of mentor role for mm-hmm. Maxine. She's given her all the, this is how you actually, the the I guess they were setting it up. I thought that the the original Puritan was like a bigger deal than I think it actually is. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. This- I think she's a l- really self-serious and taking it a little to an extreme of how serious this production yeah. is. Especially the scene Definitely. when she puts the blood in her mouth. It's like, okay, it, this yeah. is a horror sequel. Right. Like, Definitely. I get it's your big shot, but like, you're but, being a little too uptight. Sure, you know? but that's what will... If you're good, I that's feel like what that's will, realistic. But that's it yeah. is. But that's also what will elevate like that movie type of instead of like it just going like direct to VHS shelves mm-hmm. and everything, and maybe being a little more forgotten than other ones. That can help it. Mm-hmm. I guess I thought this movie was trying to make a statement with her character by saying like some people in Hollywood take their shit way too seriously. So I thought a, they were. I that's kind of why I thought they were going. I thought for. they were saying like because she's a woman, she has to take it this seriously. I, I think, think that's so. what the character believes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I and I think that she's right about that. But I think the but I think the flip it works both ways yeah. and also that I'm sh- you know those pretentious ass yeah. types. Yeah. I'm sure oh, yeah. that this is like that's how I took. Yeah. It. It's like you're making yeah. the Puritan too. Looking at, yeah. Yeah, exactly. you know. Hi, yeah. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Um, I do not run away from pretension. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's good that she gets she gets the the role. Maxine yeah. gets the role. Mm-hmm. Um, but her life becomes complicated mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. with the arrival of a video tape, mm-hmm. right? For Maxine, and on that tape uh, is footage from X, right? Yes. The the porno film that she filmed in nineteen seventy because not so much that she was in a porno movie, it's that evidence it connects her. Yeah, it's evidence <laughs> right. of these murders that yeah. she was there. Right. Yes. And so someone has figured out that she was part of this and the sole survivor, mm-hmm. and uh they're trying to track her down. Mm-hmm. And so who via Kevin Bacon. Via yeah. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Via the bacon. Uh, she so when she's clocking out from work one night, she talks to Halsey, who's also in this yes, movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh for the scene that is like it's literally the scene in the trailer, guys. That's her only scene in the movie. Like I yeah. don't know. Like, like she's got a, she, uh, uh, a leading up to a murder scene, and she is yeah, a corpse later. Uh, but, yeah, but it is but her. That, that is, is her scene. The scene in the yes. movie. Um, where she, she she does good. She's good. She got the yeah. good good accent for mm-hmm. it and everything. And the she talks, singer, if you don't know who yeah. 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 Yes, and she talks about, she's also like a fellow sex worker, and she talks about how they get, they're getting invited to these house in the Hollywood Hills, and her other porn star co-worker mentioned this house too, it's under the Hollywood sign, so all... Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, like, say they, have, they have the same spiel. Like mm-hmm. it's a big, a big Hollywood producer party yep. under the Hollywood sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so same party. And of course, you know, it's like everyone's fame hungry, but also wants to like move up in their position. So they're willing yeah. to do whatever. Right. But and she turns them down. But, she is because yeah. like she wants is like no my it's like my work will get me there. Mm-hmm. Like she, it's almost like she doesn't need to Mad go respect. to the yeah. right. Like, I don't need to go to the party in the hills and fuck mm-hmm. everyone to get where I need to go. Cause right. it seems yeah. like that's where it would end up and everything. She's, she's like, like no, no, yeah. I have to, I have work to do. I'm going to stay mm-hmm. here. Cause right. she's like practices her lines at one point and you know, she's like, seriously, <clears throat> she's taking the part mm-hmm. seriously, right? This yes. is going to be her big break. Um, there's a scene, because uh, I know it's a slasher movie. Mm-hmm. There are kill scenes. There's one, We got to talk about the first one. Was, isn't oh, the first boy. one the guy in the alley? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got to talk about oh, the guy. Uh, Buster Keaton in the alley? Yeah. Buster Holy Keaton. Holy shit. Yeah. So I was really excited, because this is my first, <laughs> second time seeing it, but I went and saw it with Sean and Holly today. Yeah, who and had not I, who had not seen it. And I was really excited to see how you guys reacted to this scene. It was almost a perfect reaction. <laughs> like, if you were watching people yes. react to something... Because the whole thing goes down where she's being... I mean, she's taking a shortcut through an alley because it leads to her... Um, the video store and her apartment. And you're like, who takes it. a shortcut through an alley? Right, Maxine but it, it goes does. right yeah. to... It goes right to where she is, and it's not I a long alley. the other night. I took a shortcut through an alley, and I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Well, yeah, I'm gonna die. <laughs> yeah. But for this night, it is chained up and locked. Mm-hmm. So she's like, fuck, I gotta go around. But she's being stalked by Buster Keaton, mm-hmm. because we have seen a montage the of... The Hollywood Strip. The yeah, Hollywood yeah. Strip of the people who are, you know, Dressed the Wonder like Woman is there. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh... Charlie Chaplin's there. Charlie Chaplin's there. Um, De Niro from Taxi Driver is there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who got arrested at a certain point in the month? Yeah. But he's there. But Buster Keaton is also there. Um, um, and yeah, yeah, and but he ends up like follows her to the alley. Follows her down the alley, stalks her, pulls a knife on her. 
Little does he know she's got a gun and she's gonna make him and, pay. Oh my god! Woo. Yeah, uh, it was like it's, it's a, a it's a, it's a flip oh. on the women in, woman in peril scene, yeah. right? Yeah. Because yeah. Maxine ends up like taking the charge of this guy, yes. right? And forces him to strip, <laughs> and then forces him to suck on her gun barrel. Yep, and then lay down, uh, face down, ass up. Mm-hmm. Although not so far up because of what happened. Yeah, because I thought she was going to rape him with I the gun barrel. So I thought so too. I thought so with the ass up line. I thought yeah. I know where that gun's going yeah. next. Yeah, going into Charles like, Bronson like territory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then it went better than I expected. Actually, it went a different direction. Ooh, better, I was okay. Quote unquote, we'll say. Well, I mean, I, it is better, but it also, subverted my also expectations. I hurt. What did yeah. she say to him? She said, do you know what happened to the last person that tried to kill me? I have fucking crushed her head in. And yeah. then she stomps on his balls with her stiletto heel. And they break. And we see this and in we close see up. It. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And me and Holly, it, it's <laughs> we just, oh, like auditory. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm a girl and I felt sore. Yeah. Oh. This was bad. Well, this is one of those moments that, I mean, it's early <laughs> yeah, enough it's, in the movie it's that. Not just, yeah, it's a it, tone setter. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not just like, oh, she steps on his balls. No, it's a you close see up it. of her heel. Heel, yeah. stabbing his nuts, and, and then the aftermath, yeah. and it actually like come, like it pops out, like yeah. it's yeah. disgusting. Yeah, it is. So it go, is it's like uh, how do they get like, away with this? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like um, um, Hostel Two, where she cuts it off. Yeah, the one, oh. it's like that. Well, oh. but do they get away oh. with it because there oh. is like there? It's not. It doesn't read to me as. Um, you know, it's like, is it maliciously cruel? It's like there's, th- he it's, it's he like, desert, it's quote, like quote, a black it. comedy oh, yeah. bit, maybe, or no. If there's some black comedy I mean, to the movie, yeah. I think. There, there, there is, is. There, there definitely is. is. That I think allows it to go over the top. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. why it's seen as like this cumulative. It's not like the ratings board well, is like, like you can't like, do that. There's so much satisfaction in watching this scene. Like, it's it's not that it's funny. It's that it's like fucking finally. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the woman finally like takes charge and attacks the dude yeah. because he's a. Yeah. Like, right. It's, it's so satisfying. It is. And, but I think if if the MPA is doing their job. And they're looking at violence in the movie if it if it's deserved, if it will do something character wise, if it will push a character forward. This is a tone setter for Maxine for the rest of the movie. Right. In yeah. what she will in take. In case you didn't see the won't. other movie, right. this is establishing who she like is. Like what yeah. her attitude is about not letting anybody stop her for any she was reason. Instantly my hero. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that is a big setup for for her character in the movie. Mm-hmm, yeah. And I think you get away with a lot more. If it's in ser- if it's not just wanton violence, then I, if it's in service of a character, I think it goes a lot farther and people will forgive that mm-hmm. more. And I think that is what this does for her. Okay, then some of her friends start dying, right? And all of her friends. They're, yeah. they're branded. <laughs> but the, the I guess the thing that, they're all branded with a satanic, with a pentagram. Yes, yeah. yeah. And um, hail Satan, mm-hmm. right? So we're into that. You know, this That's is the, was that the calling card of the Night Stalker? Mm-hmm. I know, like he, oh, he had a satanic in his, in his hand. Wasn't it, it carved in the palm of his hand? Yeah. See, I don't remember yeah. specifics of the Night Stalker. To, to, I just remember the the chase through Hollywood yeah. or whatever to get around. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that famous story. <laughs> I don't remember how much Satanism was involved within his killing. It was, yeah. I think it was very like he. All of his crime scenes okay. were, you know, in <laughs> service of Satan or whatever. <laughs> Um, <laughs> didn't he get caught because he dropped his ACDC hat at a crime scene? Like, Maybe. Pretty sure that. I remember that was a big a part, part of it. it. Yeah. 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 ACDC uh, fucked him over, the, man. And then fucking LA came to life. And, yeah. And, and united. Fa- and united <laughs> yeah. and took this man the down. The documentary on that. It's, is gra- it's a great, great story. Yeah. yeah. It's such a good story. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If you ignore all the, you know, innocent lives lost. But. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah but this takes place while he's still at large. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we're assuming then that the Night Soccer is something to do with it. Although the movie does, if you're paying attention at all, keeps on dropping these. They keep saying, we don't think it's the Night Stalker. We think it's someone pretending. Yeah, yeah. because there's the cops say yeah. yeah. yeah, there's, there's cops. There's cops. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And who are they? Yeah, enter Bobby Cannavale and Michelle Monaghan. Love. Right? Great duo. Love right? these two. Right? Do they, we, where do we get? Do we get the shoot off prequel with them as cops? Yeah. Figuring other shit out in LA? I a, I'd watch it. I want a buddy cop movie with them. They have good yeah. chemistry and they both have the good look for the FBI. Does that make sense? They have oh, the no, FBI agent look. No, she's good cop. Yeah. It's never said. I hope she lived. Michelle Monaghan. <laughs> I, I think she could. I, I think she, she could have. But, I don't think she uh, did. The way she was uh, uh, like muttering random yeah, words makes me not think good. she didn't hit her brain. Yeah. So. And with yeah, with the crucifix sticking out of her eye, it's yeah. not a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. Not a good sign. Mm-hmm. 
Well, so they're they're the cops who are investigating the the killings. Mm-hmm. They're playing good cop, bad cop, and they mm-hmm. brace Maxine to try yeah. and you know like you know something. But these are your friends, and you know you have to help us out. Well, the, solve Michelle it. Monahan keeps calling him out for like His, acting like, all ham all the time. Actor. So why doesn't Maxine cooperate with the police? Because these I mean, are her would friends. She? It will lead back to her past. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She, There's no reason to cooperate. Yeah, because. There's like she said, there's nothing pan here to this because guys, back in the day, you could get away with a crime by just pretending but you just didn't do it. You just leave and you could get away with a crime. And she's dyed her hair and she has an '80s look now. She doesn't look the same as she did yeah. then. So yeah. Yeah. done. She's good. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, but that's she- all unraveling because Kevin Bacon does know who she and his is. Best foghorn Leghorn accent. What is this? It's like yeah. perfect it's, is what it is. It, yeah, yeah, his yeah, white it is, suits. It's, it's, it is. He is very fog. Foghorn like yeah. <laughs> he is, and I love it's it. Great. I love it so much. He's like Redneck Matlock. Mm-hmm. So here's a, a thing that I observed was, you know, there's a scene, you know, we know that he has delivered the videotape to her. Yeah. She's supposed to know, you know, I know that you're this person, right? Mm-hmm. And we see that he is chauffeuring someone around town. And we're like, okay, that's the person in the black jacket, uh, yeah. you know, the Hat, black leather. Jacket, mm-hmm. a mask, it would seem, gloves. Yeah. Which, and, I mean, we should talk about the fact that the the lighting, the black glove, like it's very shallow there for yeah. a few yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a couple scenes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very he, much so. he, we see him killing the friends, right? We, um, well, we, yeah, we get like a video camera POV of this house with the green door, which like is a theme too. And uh, yeah, then we see him take Tabby and the other girl out of the closet and do something to them. They're gagged and yeah, being tortured. The, we, we get a lot of, uh, we, uh, we switch aspect ratios going through this. Yeah. Um, as we get into like video mode mm-hmm. at this point, we get a lot of static, mm-hmm. video static, which is always VHS. You know, oh yep. yeah. Which, yes, I love it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't know why we're saying oh yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Like, Remember you things. Yeah. 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 These so are so bad. bad. Yeah. It right. Did, it was you off at the time. Now we're just like, oh, we missed it. Yeah. Yeah. Tracking. It's like, what's the tracking button? I'm just, right. There's so much stuff the well, kid like, will like, never know. It's like listening to a tracking button because shit just wouldn't go right It's like listening to an old record. We love all the pop. Yeah, 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 yeah. But VHS was a goddamn okay. Well, and she, <laughs> she, so she asked her friend Moses Somebody's character, don't remember his name. Uh, he just exists, so she has someone to talk to, right? Yes. And so that yes. we have another body, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, he runs the adult video store, toy store, and they, the I kind of There's like a fetish wall with a lot of knives on it in yeah. this place. Yeah. Like and the eighties were wild. And yeah. He's constantly playing with a Bowie knife. Yeah. Con- like, a big one. It was yeah. a Rambo one. knife. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's yeah. a Rambo knife. Yeah. yeah. But he also knows like a little too much about horror movies. It feels like. Somebody from now got transported back uh, into his body. Uh, yeah. He knows a bit too much, but I won't complain about it too much. Yeah. It's fun. But he, um, I forgot what I was going to say about I'm his sorry. character. No, it's all good. It's all good. I was trying to think of. Well, he becomes he, a victim he, well, he, too. Yeah, he yeah. becomes a victim and they kind of like use him to bait her into talking a little bit more. The it doesn't too. work. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, oh, I was going to point out when she's on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and she puts a cigarette out on Theta Barra's. Yeah. Uh, um, Who's star? Bar? She's like the first scream queen. Okay. She was like okay. a silent movie scream queen okay. yeah. who was like iconic. Like you've definitely seen pictures of her because it's a picture that gets like framed up in like goth stores and tattoo okay. shops okay. all the time. To, yeah, I need to see yeah. a picture because I, I, I saw the, I saw the yeah. name and I was like, I know that name. Yeah, she was yeah. like the first scream queen. So I like the I like the little nods like that no, in this Ty movie. West yeah, is fangirling this entire movie. Right. Like, yeah. There's the whole movie. Is that like I mean because it is I think he has in the other ones too right he's. Oh. She yeah. wasn't, she wasn't in like the yeah. cabin of Dr. Caligari or anything, was she? Because no, like she's before got that, that, but she's even. got that look. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've seen yeah. the pictures of her yeah. before. Yeah, she's got that yeah. look. Yeah. Um, okay. We need to talk about. Oh no. Giancarlo Esposito in this movie. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, Teddy, we Knight. Him. Yeah. Teddy Knight Esquire, Sean. Esquire, Esquire. doing his best. He's like, I'm going to channel a little bit of Better Call Saul right now. Yep. Just a little bit. He's killing it. He's, He's Maxine's entertainment lawyer. The love best. Him so much. The hair. The alone. most ridiculous hair piece, <laughs> but I love it. Um, I, I love this man. I would trust him with my life. 
uh, he's just doing wonderful things. This made me think of Angel. This character, this feels yeah. like he would be an angel because the way he talks to her, he's like, don't you worry about anything other than crushing that movie. Well, I'll the, take care of you. Yeah, like, and the way he was like, the way he was saying that he's going to take care of her, I was like, please don't make this turn around yes. and make him be the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't make him be sleazy him, in yeah. any regard. so much. And like he, the whole movie, he genuinely is just he really is. looking So sweet to her. Which is, that yeah. is yeah. The, that does have so satisfying. Yeah. yeah. You know, like the, yeah. It does. Yes. It, it really, especially later with the scene with Kevin Bacon and then the the bodyguard from yeah. her strip club. It's like, what are, I was like, what did oh. he say? What are agents for? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yes. But he's doing love all this the, man. He's doing all the classic agent stuff, like walking on the treadmill while talking on his headpiece, yeah. yeah. and like, but in this ridiculous wig. And I like that Giancarlo Esposito gets to be menacing as always, but sure, yeah. funny and charming yeah. and have some levity. Like he's not just flat and menacing like he is in a lot of things. Right, well, yeah. He's still these menacing, but they have are all these actors, you know, that we're talking about Big stars uh, Michelle Monahan, yeah. Kevin Bacon, you know, Kevin Bacon has a bigger part, yeah. I guess, than uh, Giancarlo Esposito uh-huh. does. And then Bonnie, Bobby Carnival. Yeah. And, but it's they he was able to get like these good people to do, very yeah. Yeah. small roles. Yep. Lily but Collins they, is also in this movie for a little yeah. tiny bit. You know, that's right, they have small the, roles. The, Lily Collins, the former yes. star of, or the star she's of the, the original. Puritan. Yeah, she was the star of the original Puritan. Yeah. Yes, and her. <laughs> and she gets her burnt trailer to Chris, moment. Apparently, yeah. That's wonderful. So, Loved so it. So funny. So funny. But it's perfect because that's what she would do because like that's her face on the on the front of the yeah. box. She's yeah. Like, yeah. just acting that she out. She was like, you Loved remember it. me? Ah. Loved yeah. it. <laughs> so funny. Well, so, so And where she end up? Yeah. Yeah. And we know that Kevin Bacon is in the employ of whoever is has wanted to yep. track uh, Maxine mm-hmm. down. Yep. Okay. So then um, Kevin Bacon delivers a letter to her that basically tells her he gives it to her at the meetup in the yeah. mm-hmm. restaurant, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Because I guess I was confused from a plotting point of view. I'm like, why is he still here? What right. is Kevin Bacon's interest in staying in this movie after you have located the girl that your employer wanted you to find and you've told her go to the hotel. Right. But he sticks around and he keeps on following her. There's a very cool scene where uh, there's like in the Hollywood back lot. Yeah, they it's have the a univer- chase. It's the at universal the, back lot. Yeah. The psycho house. Yeah, yes. it's amazing. There is, they go through there Stars is, Hollow. There is, yeah. a, there is a, right around the corner from this, there's a lake with a Jaws animatronic shark yeah. happening in the, and everything. Yeah. Like this, I, I love an L.A set movie mm-hmm. i love an la backlot yeah. movie yeah. so this is yeah. just like larry fessenden is the security guard yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, i'm like who the fuck's the security yeah. guard yeah i didn't catch we're it from habit yeah, yeah. We're, we're habit. i didn't catch it as we were watching it but oh. i'm like they keep showing him like i know this guy right. like he's somebody and they're, and they're running through like the old west town yes yep. from oh, fucking yeah. from fucking once upon a time in hollywood they are, yeah they are. it is the same it's where the they're same sitting one. it is it's i saw it because i'm like yeah. that's the same one because yeah. they were sitting there talking him and timothy like, oliphant where, yeah yes yeah it and was. They, like when she first pulls into the back lot kevin bacon's behind her and this is the trailer scene Love. where she just beats the shit out of him with the keys in her fist to saint elmo's fire great yes oh, loved it's so it so good yeah. it's so good i love the blatantness of him just having a camera following behind her because that's all you can do huge betamax camera yeah exactly out of hesitation, she's just like, "Well, fuck this and guy," and she just yeah. grabs and then he's keys. just he's oh. narrating it out loud. He's just like, "Yep, can't go anywhere without seeing me," and then just <laughs> <laughs> and it's oh, beautiful. It's and she wonderful. kicks the fucking mirror off. That was the best like parting shot, kicking yeah. that mirror off like that. I like, felt yeah, that. Yeah, that's the fuck yeah. you. I'm going. Yeah. Like, wonderful. Mm-hmm. There's also um, like a subcurrent of like these protesters that are um, yes. who become very Satan stole the my end. daughter. Satan stole my daughter. Yeah. I want the yeah. Um, on a t-shirt, I want the, the uh, I am a victim of rock <laughs> that I saw on a sign <laughs> earlier in the movie. I'm yeah. like, yes, did, I want well, that, that t-shirt. Well, that was the era, the... right? I mean, yeah. there was the, yes. the back what? masking, you know, because of the Night Stalker, yeah. I think. Well, like, in... you know, it's like he inspired, he was inspired by rock music, which we must get... be satanic. <laughs> one of my, the movies. <laughs> yeah. satanic one of my favorite be... quotes in the movie is from that, called uh, from the title sequence, is we get a clip of Tipper Gore saying, well, I bought Purple Rain for my 10-year-old. <laughs> and I, I lose it every time. And then they cut to Dee Snyder talking at the hearing, right, and so like yep. they, they're really couching us in like yeah the the satanic panic. Yeah. But it's I so love great. that that was the one setup that they used for her, and then cut away <laughs> the from it. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's, do you think Tywas was just giggling to himself? I when fucking he edited hope this? so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. 
Well, there's uh, more subsequent murders. I think, I don't know how many there were in total, but it's everyone who has been invited up to this mm -hmm. party in the hills. Yeah. She's been given a yeah. direct so it's, invitation it's four of her friends. from yeah. uh, Kevin Bacon, go mm -hmm. to the party in the hills. But before she can go to the party in the hills, she has to deal with Kevin Bacon because this guy is a yes. problem for and, her. And to back to your question about like why is he still around? Yeah, like I, I'm with you on that. Like, I have why an is answer, he... but I think there's something missing from the movie. Okay, because he because not only does he stick around, but he's uh, wanting violence towards her. Like he's got a gun on him. He's constantly pulling on her. Is he going to kill her? Is he just want her to go for his client? Like, like he is very. Why is he in the movie? He's so because much he's, more motivated than he should be. He is making sure that she shows up at the mansion at some point. Yeah, is it why this, is a why? private investigator that invested? Because, because he said his employer keeps paying yeah. him. Doesn't he even say something the, like that? The employer keeps paying him because yeah. the employer can't be seen. So it has to be him to make sure she gets there. So the money is there's a lot of money yeah. behind him yeah. doing this. And yeah, because doesn't sure. he even tell her he's like you can't buy your way out of retribution? Like yeah. he tells her that. Like he's That's like a, yeah. But he's like so that would make him very invested in in yeah. her instead of okay. So here's what okay. the read <laughs> I had on it, but I don't know if the movie conveyed it. Maybe it wasn't there, but I think. You know, she's a porn star. He wants to fuck the porn star, and he's a sleazy PI. I didn't get that he, at all. The only reason I have this is because eventually she figures out, well, the way I'm going to lure this guy is I'm going to give him what he wants, and I'm going to go to this club and seduce him, and he follows Chase into a trap that she sets. So it's like that plays to the idea. But he went in with a gun in the bathroom. You really think I, that he was seduced in that moment? I, I think he was seduced to follow her into the bathroom. I, but God he goes into the gun with it goes in the bathroom with the gun kicking the door and saying he's gonna get her. Yeah, I don't think there's anything sexual about it. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I agree way. with Holly. I don't yeah. feel any mm, sexual no. motivation yeah, from I think this it's character. Really I think if they gave him that he would have been scummier. Yeah. You know, yeah, but I sure. think that would have also I mean I think that still would mm -hmm. lead to where we yeah. go with his we, character. We, yeah, yeah we, we didn't need it because, I mean, at the end of the movie, we, when we find out why the killer couldn't show his face, we're like, yeah, he needs a proxy to be there to mm -hmm. constantly right. push her towards the mansion. Right. Because mm -hmm. she you, won't you, go on her. She's savvy enough not to go mm -hmm. on I mean, would you her go? own volition. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I understand what you're saying because you would think there would be a limit to his, after getting punched in the face repeatedly with keys. Yes. Yeah. You'd think there would be a limit to yeah. his involvement. Like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I yeah. have to back out. But if he's and maybe somebody else would kill this him. woman, right. then it would, you know, because no, then she I think eventually. He's just getting right. paid a lot of money. I agree that would make sense, but I believe, Leon, there's no nothing else that says yeah. that. Money is, seems to be his big motivating factor. Yeah, he makes, because he mentions that later on. He mentions it on. multiple times. He even's like, yeah, I have an expense account. Get whichever you want. Like, right. he's very much like. And he even says, as during his which we'll get to he's like, like, yeah, he's like you can pay you pay me i'll do anything you want and yeah. during his and then he's literally like scene. whores like me and you we 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 have a right. price not yeah. my employer yeah. yeah he does i like yeah. that the yeah. whores like you yeah. yeah. great i love that line great. that so conversation good. between those two in that it's dining so area is really good mm -hmm. i love that scene too because i was aware that when they were playing frankie goes to hollywood mm -hmm. it wasn't relax right yeah. but the uh, scene yeah. is like a dramatized version of the fake porno scene in Body Double, right? Where the guy is going into the club and meets the porn star right. at the end of it. And they're playing like similar music. And I'm like, yeah. oh, shit. Um, you guys remember that movie? I that don't that? think I've ever seen Body Double. <sighs> we it's, been, it's been on my list. Oh. We yeah. talked about Didn't, it. Did we watch it? I, who's in it? Um, Craig Sheffer, Melanie Griffith. I think you guys it's did It's a Brian it. De Palma movie. I like well, a long time no. ago, maybe. Oh, oh man, you haven't seen Body. Okay, I don't think. Well, sorry, I don't think so we may. <laughs> I'm not gonna remember I don't think, that. I don't think any so. of us were here. That's one of my favorite Brian yeah. De Palma movies. All right. What was the like, Michael Caine one? I feel one? like I looked that Dressed up. Dressed to Kill. That's okay. Yeah, because I feel like I looked that up to do it, and you guys had already done it. I think yeah. you guys had done it. I don't think any yeah. of us have been. Oh, Sounds like okay, it needs to come okay. back. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Um, okay. For those of you who have seen it, I think there's a call out to it in this movie. But they do go to a club. He is brought in, and there is another chase into the bathroom and everything. Kevin Bacon and her. Um, wow, where they end up in the at the back of uh of the club, yeah, yeah. and uh, which is you know mm -hmm. turns out to be a setup. He gets clubbed in the back of the head by this guy, and Good the bouncer, fall, yeah. oh, the, the fall, the fall off the loading dock, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. boom, <laughs> loved it. We, we all went, ooh, he like yeah. slaps the pavement, yeah, it's, oh, it's like, oh. and so he ends up. Well, what's going on here, right, is that John Carlo Esposito, her mm -hmm. attorney, has been. She's like, I need to find out who is this guy is and who's coming after me, right? Yeah. So he's on her team, 
and they've engineered this trap and yeah. they get this guy because he tells her he's like next time this guy contacts you you call me I, mean, yeah. I am call. dealing with he's this negotiation yeah. 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 yeah it's he hardcore always, he says that great line he's like he uh, he thinks he's the big bad wolf. No, I'm the big bad wolf. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's I'm so the bad. one who knocks. Yeah. 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 Everybody so says nice. that, you know, to be right. a big badass. But they're actually but like prepared really to go is. the the distance. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. He, the way Kevin Bacon's story went surprised me. Yeah, it big was time. surprised because you don't know where it's going to go. But yeah. the fact that he keeps coming around and just like, OK, this is going somewhere. Mm-hmm. It does. Like he ends up handcuffed to his car in a, a car crusher. Yep. And, and he, he gets car get crushed. Out. He doesn't get out. Yeah. And. I didn't know if he was gonna. Like, I didn't know if they were gonna do it. Yeah. Like, if they would if stop they would at the stop last it, minute. Yeah. And, nope. Yeah. Nope. They just crush him. And he. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the great line. He's like, well, what are agents for? Yeah. Like, what are agents for? Because he and tells her. He's fucking smoked. He he's tells like, no. her to go home and they'll yeah. clean up. Like, so we'll nice. <laughs> like, I fucking love you, Jean oh, Carlos so This shot of the three of them is so cartoony, but so great. Because she's I, there in her jacket and her cute little boots. He's smoking in that suit. And then. And the, we got the guy with the dogs. The, the typical, like, fucking bouncer with two junkyard dogs. Yes. Like, literally, like, cartoon junkyard like, dogs. It's, it's, just, he's literally just standing there like he's just had the worst day. Yeah. Like, but the the shot is it's 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 profiles of them, but li- staggered and yeah. lined up like it's static. I wanted it to move mm-hmm. a little bit, but uh, it's just it's a good shot of yeah. them just mm-hmm. as this whole thing goes right. down. I find that her fashion to be very realistic. Does that make sense? It like is. she's yeah. she's not just wearing fucking like neon workout gear like no. everyone thinks she dresses everyone's up when 80s. she needs to she yeah. dresses up for the right for the thing she specifically that she's doing right and when she's comfortable she's got jeans and some like sneakers, a crop top yeah and, and a yeah. fucking like, like and her her, her jacket uh, her set jacket yeah. yeah which has got her name on it yeah yeah i love it mm-hmm. style like, is, the mm-hmm. style is great because mm-hmm. a lot of, like the stuff that she was wearing at home i was like that's stuff i wear to right bed. like right <laughs> right i need h&m or somebody to just do like the maxine clothing <laughs> on so i'll buy it all like, so yeah i'll buy it all Maxine work, Maxine casual. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. It's Do so the good. Maxine line. Mm-hmm. So eventually, then I think with him out of the way, she goes to the. Uh, what was the motivating factor for why she? Yeah, was like I'm going to go to the party. She does eventually oh. listen to Michelle Monaghan, or it comes back to her. It's like, well, in because the, when they have the they come, well, they the director. Each other. The director talks to her, and she was like, "This weekend, go out and have some fun, and you take care of whatever's keeping you from this movie." Mm-hmm. Right, whatever is fucking. And she it says, up "I intend this. to." There's, mm-hmm. yep, there's yeah. that. Whatever's distracting. Her. And yeah. there's a final conversation between the cops, between Cannavale and Michelle mm-hmm. Monaghan and her. Um, I think she, they bring her into the morgue and unveil her friends who had been there, and she takes a, a route in still not helping. That is just. Um, because Michelle Monaghan says, "Like, help me save the next girl." Right, and she gives what I think is a, a defining. It's a definition of her character, which is just like maybe she should help herself. Mm-hmm. I did, mm-hmm. like, and that's how she's been going about this. Yeah, mm-hmm. this far, she's like, I have done this. My, I have survived. I have worked, and I have gotten here. Mm-hmm. They find. I don't know why they find. Um. Later on, they find a softness to that because she relives that conversation and decides that's when she decides to go up to the mansion okay. to figure out what's going on. But here's the thing. Why do Bobby Cannavale and Michelle Monaghan think she knows anything? Just be, I think it's mostly because what do they everyone, think she who, knows? everyone who keeps dying is around her. Yeah, their friends are hers. So right, eventually yeah, but, she's going to be a victim or so, she knows but, somebody. So they're, who, just like, but, they're just like, okay. tell us something. But are, right. they inve- but are they investigating the Night Stalker case or are they investigating the porno murders? The porno murders. Porno yeah. murders. Because they said that like, so we what, don't. How, we how don't, do we know that any of that's connected then? They don't that, think they don't, it is. Right. I, I think, right? But then, no, but they think it's outside of the Night Stalker. I guess they've been telling us this the whole way through the movie. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that they are not the previous previous murders like from the the, were they just using that as like leverage on or her? the night stock because they bring it they bring it up because they bring up part? the they bring up the they read off the names they say do these people ring a bell to you oh, and so they, they never right? they and they say and they Wait. never found who killed no no, no, no that, that was, was kevin, kevin bacon. bacon that was kevin bacon yes. okay okay kevin bacon reads off the names okay he knows okay detective okay never mind then yeah right but they are just hunting the night stalker yes they don't know but they also don't but they also don't think these are night stalker murders we don't think it's him but someone's doing it we need to right. figure and out their only connection out. as to why the questioning is because they are all her they're friends. all her friends gotcha. yeah gotcha. okay so big mansion in the hollywood mm-hmm. hills yes yeah, she decides because she got that note from kevin bacon she decides to finally go mm-hmm. yeah 
and uh, she got knocked out when she got there. What happened? She okay. So she ends up uh, the, an intricate ride because the cops mm-hmm. are following her. So they they follow her to the mansion. There is a lift. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they up said the gondola, look real cosmopolitan yeah. shit. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Take a real cool. Yeah. Love yeah. this. Yeah. Not pregnant. Want, 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 no, Again, but want to double. live in this house yeah. where you have to take the, that <laughs> fucking ride up yeah. to yeah. where yeah. you live. So she's got to take that up there. Um, and she ends up uh, well, she ends up going through the house. Which is yeah, abandoned. yeah. And she sees the green door, which we know from video. Right. Yeah, you know, it's she behind the video. green door. Yeah, yeah. she she hears <laughs> yeah. she hears. Yeah. 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 I see yeah. what she did there. It's not. Yeah, it's not she, behind the. And she hears the she hears the video playing of her dad talking to her when she's on stage as a little girl. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that draws mm-hmm. her in there, and then yeah. there's the reveal of because he's in there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the black gloved killer is revealed. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is revealed to, to be, be her father. Mm-hmm. Who stalked her to Los Angeles and is now, so the motive, right? Because she somehow is knocked out, right? Okay, so. Because she uh, wakes up there, well, chained there, to yeah, a. There's the, well, hold on. So, there's, yeah. there's that reveal. There's a monologue from him. Yeah, and they There's kinda, a stumble backwards into yes. a suitcase, which falls down the stairs. Oh, like, the body and parts. Up, and going, the body yeah. parts come out. Yeah. He's going all of the, evangelist on her. Right, yeah. of yeah. the actress who was Lily in the Puritan Collins. of yeah. Lily Collins, yeah. who ends up. As the face on the cover of the yeah, yeah, movie yeah. at the end, beautiful. I thought I thought that moment was beautiful. The the slow motion of the suitcase, like people are going to think I'm nuts, <laughs> but the slow motion of the no, suitcase, it's good. It's good. flopping down the stairs, the, bursting open, the and rolls, body yeah. parts flying out, and the head like beautiful, <laughs> like like a ballet of violence and gore. Yeah. Like because the body parts, like you can see, like the flesh move, like it's, yes. yeah. it's good. Yeah, it's yeah. it's just it's good stuff. Like what would the the because. It, just re- remember every fucking 80s, 70s horror movie we watched where you get an actor and then you get the actor in the death scene and their dummy looks nothing like yes. them. Uh, yeah. Now we have that ability <laughs> to get them all to look exactly like who they are. We and get, it's terrifying. We got to talk about, speaking of that, so there's a scene where she gets a oh, life cast it's made. It's prosthetic, yeah. Oh, she gets a life okay. cast made. The, my Good worst God. come to life. Okay, Ooh, the yeah. first time I saw this I movie in theaters, this. as soon as they started doing it, I leaned over to my husband and I said, I would have a panic attack panic if they did this to me. And then she had a panic right. attack. They didn't, they didn't put the, the straws <laughs> up. No, 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 no. She was like, make sure to breathe. I was like, how is she going to breathe? But right? did, is this what saying, if it slops over her nose hole? Yeah. Is this kind of saying, though, this is what like a B-movie set is like, is we kind of just slap it together? But Or is this lady bad at her? Well, this lady's definitely the, bad the, at her The job. lady yeah. shouldn't have left her, first the, of all. I can't believe the lady left her alone. I, can, yeah, no, I was like, that's definitely not allowed. To, that's yeah. not allowed. No, not yeah. allowed. But um, I feel like and under the best circumstances, you would still have a panic attack. Never never mind all the trauma she's been through. Right. Every time I see like, behind the scenes thing where they're doing a life cast of someone, no, I'd be like, I can't no, do that. I can't. Never could. <laughs> I, I can't be an actor because I can't do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, what is the killer's motivation revealed to be? Well, her Religious. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They, it turns out they are technically the people who have been with the signs who have been protesting on the mm-hmm. corner the entire time. Mm-hmm. It's all those people. Okay. Yeah. And so it is. Uh, because They're making a snuff film. Okay. Well, I, but there her was, father. Their response to the satanic panic. Yeah. yeah basically, yeah. yes. Her are father they, is, very, is the idea that they're creating the satanic panic. Yes. They're creating their own panic because they're the ones putting yes. the the pentagram on these people and murdering yes. them. Yep. Yeah. Because they make it seem like it's a satanic killer, so yes. that'll drive people to the church. Right. Yes. And this also, is not the first movie this year that has had this idea. No, and I'm like, oh no. The what the fuck is good? Yeah, the yeah. third. Yeah. I'm like, this year, it's like, what? Yes. So in the movie, Movie, then the religious community is creating the devil basically to drive yes. people to well but he the, also said the they're marking people so that we all know the devil walks among us so it's like you're marked with your sin basically is, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is a story as old as old right. as yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, i mean the fact that i've seen it three times this year yeah. seems weird yeah you know, that Something, like, and then we got yeah, is, heretic coming out later it is a year of religious horror that's yeah, for sure but yeah. the makes, religious horror is, yeah. is yeah, strange is horror you know i guess that's what i'm saying it's like the it used to year. be that religious horror because i guess more audiences mm-hmm. were religious saw the movies and you scare people to the church right. with yeah. the, you know the, right. the exorcist or whatever right. now Every, it's a more secular society, right. yes. and it's the religious people are the bad guys, yes. right. which is strange. And, and the climax <laughs> is going to be that he's going to perform an exorcism on her. Yeah, and yes. like I on can't film. remember this actor's name, but how did you guys feel about her dad's performance? I let me look up this dude's name. I think he's 
doing what the character was supposed to do. Yeah, I mean, I took it as he's a sh- you know, because I think we've established that yeah. that you he's know not he's the a showman. Of this. Something about it isn't fully working for me. I agree. Simon Prast is his name. Yeah, I agree. I'm not gonna. I don't want to pick it up part too much there's not every, much to everything pick, right yeah. and everything around it is is so strong but maybe that was, is what makes this stand out i think that's what it is but he, i think there could be a a, a stronger or better performance from a different mm-hmm. actor in this part it's weird to me that everyone else in this movie is like super famous and this guy is not i think the famous anybody famous may have may have taken away from the part and so maybe that's why it's they want this direction. I've, I've seen so many other people do an evangelical eccentric. Right. Writer. Like, did you ever, did you see the devil all the time? No. no. Robert Pattinson. Yeah. Oh. Does a crazy evangelical on that. And he's fantastic. I mean, we watched yeah. the last exorcism yeah. on yeah, the show. Exactly. That's an amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Version of that. I've seen it yeah. Done way better. Yeah. And I yeah. think, yeah. I, th- but I think, Sean, I think you're onto something that like everything else works so well that that's why it's sticking. Right. Out. And that yeah. may be why this is sticking out is something that's not right. as strong as the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Like, and it would be hard to, 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 it's harder to judge it on its own based on mm-hmm. everything else, especially, especially leading up to this because everything else is so strong and, a, you know, a reveal is always hard it's always going to disappoint end. somebody always. also uh, also uh because uh, let's talk about the first reveal of the dad character to bring up scream three. <laughs> oh no oh no here we go we've unlocked but something okay. it is but like the lone heroine walking into uh uh walking into a room where the the past is playing in front okay. of her and a killer reveal and a monologue <laughs> like scream 3 was the yeah. first thing that came to mind yeah. in this part a little bit of a lift yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, i'm not even saying they even saw it or lifting it but it just like the, the 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 themes of what they're saying and who they're saying it to and the fact that it's just him and her and everything like that is the first thing i thought of but again that may just be me uh, but i and- felt it yeah, I don't know. There, <laughs> there's problems with the third act for yeah. sure. It's when, the biggest criticism I, of this yeah. movie. I think so. so yeah. Let me. I haven't read the criticism, but that here's, is the general here's consensus. What my problem was with the third act was that we've established that Maxine is a mover and a shaker. Yeah. She makes things happen, mm-hmm. right? But in the third act, she's like neutralized. She's chained up, and you're like, well, how is she going to? somehow you know get out of this Mm -hmm. yeah and it's a deus ex machina Mm -hmm. happens the police show up and they shoot people and she's able to escape but even then it's like we knew their police were following her though i know they set that up but it's like right right. they they come in shoot everybody it's a big Mm -hmm. shootout so now maxine doesn't have to deal with a whole bunch of cultists and then she goes in pursuit of her dad but uh, he shot uh, Bobby Carnival, mm-hmm. yeah. And then yep. in the end, I it's liked like- his, I liked his ending. Like yeah. him always wanting to be an actor, that that grip under the Hollywood sign yeah. that he gives. Like, yeah, like I've been go. here thirty years and I've never been up here. I never right. I liked it. Yeah, it's like, good, I yeah, thought it was it's good. A good like it's not, yeah, it's just a good moment. But like, I guess I'm saying what it does for Maxine is it. She's not. The reason why the yeah. why it stops. The she doesn't stop. Happening. She's such yeah. a badass the whole movie, and then all of a sudden she's like. She's she not does, the she, reason. She doesn't need to be a hero. She, yeah, she's, like it's, it's like I had this problem with the yeah. end of uh, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull also, mm. where it's like you got Indiana Jones, oh. and then the end of it, he's le- he's following other people along, and right. shit just is happening. It's yes. circumstance is sh- right. taking in, over. In, in, a mo- in where she is a, a huge driving force yeah. of this movie, she's she not is driving not the in end that of moment. The, because even when she approaches her father... He's been shot, and so now he's not a challenge to her, right? Because he's weak and he's on the ground, he's bleeding because yeah. Michelle Monaghan got him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, then at that point, she just has to kind of deliver the coup de gras, right? To end the movie and mm-hmm. you know break. And free. you want her to have that. You want her to have that kind of Schwarzenegger last line to blow away a bad guy or something mm-hmm. like to have more involvement in how things shook out. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just, I show up and the guy's already shot and I right. just basically have lucky to say, that police were there. Yeah. yeah. Cause otherwise she's dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, that's the way they, yeah. Cause I guess otherwise I was looking for how is she going to, right. And so was I, cause I forgot escape. the police were there. So I'm like, how yeah. does this work yeah. out? There's a sequence that happens, uh, as she's standing over her father with yes. the gun mm-hmm. and, uh, she imagines, I think, mm-hmm. uh, the premiere of Puritan two. And it's like a, 
big Hollywood premiere. Like she's on like Good Morning America, basically talking about with, it. With her good vision. hair. Yeah. 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 And and Teddy Knight, her, her right agent next sitting her. right yeah. next door. Yeah. 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 And she has become a star. Mm-hmm. A star Not right? only because she's in the movies, but because she took down the Night Stalker, which I mean, if you, well, no, not technically, but they, well, they talk in, about the Night Stalker, and it's like you took down a serial killer of your own. And so it, they, I'm talking about in her fantasy thing. In the fantasy, they yeah. do that. They it's do. not the yeah. Night Stalker. Yeah, they say they, they say like, oh, the Night Stalker was taking out. And in other news, we've got another person yeah. who took down right. a serial killer. Yeah, but also when she, but when she's on the red carpet. They say, how does it feel to be the star of like the number one movie and also the one who took down the Night Stalker? I don't think they say Night Stalker. They don't say that. Okay. No. Yeah. Um, but they are asking about like the movie and everything. Anyways, like point yes. being, could you imagine if this happened in real life? That like, Could you imagine if someone that was like an A-list actor also solved like yeah, a really... It's like Rick Dalton. <laughs> real not, not life. Real, not real life, but okay. Yeah. But yes. yes. That is also another movie. Yeah. You know what? I forgot about that and I didn't put that together. There is that similarity between the two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah. Because I mean, I guess you know, she's fantasizing about the career boost. There will be a career boost, yeah. I'm sure, for her because yeah. I think it. Wait. In it's in the fantasy. Elizabeth Debicki is going to do a uh, document or a movie about the life story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You sold your life rights. How does it feel? Mm-hmm. But it comes. Is back that supposed to, to be? Um, what's her name from CBS? Um, who's married to Les Moonves? The one who hosts Big Brother. Uh, it's not Julie Chen. Is it Julie Chen? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that supposed to be Julie Chen? Sure. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, all right. Continue on. Mm-hmm. Well, it. I guess I'm the only one who knows CBS. It does end sense. with the uh, her, you know, saying that line that you know, basically, like I, uh, you know, was able to sell. It's a self actualization yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, and then she kills him. And she says it's divine intervention has helped her career basically <laughs> to become a star because she's the, gonna be famous because of this. The yeah. police helicopters are hovering spotlights on her while she shoots her dad and her the head explodes yes. in a beautiful practical effect. Yes. Love it. Um but I mean it'd just be like, I don't know, could you imagine if like Florence Pugh <laughs> caught the fucking uh Long Island serial killer right? and, and, and was away. in June in the same year. Yeah. I mean, like craziness. Like, Absolute craziness. I, just, I think she could. <laughs> like that would be fucking nuts. Like she, like top of the just top of stardom. Yeah. Okay. Automatically. And well, and like that's the thing. Like she's already really famous. So you'd have to think about it as someone who's like a B actor and then this happens to them and they become like an A actor. Yeah. Right. I did like didn't Elizabeth Elizabeth Debicki have a line about something like it's uh it's a B movie with A ideas. Yes. Yeah. And I, I like, like that. That's, that's a, great, a good that's, line. Uh, I was like, We watch a lot of a those. Lot of those. Yeah. Right, we yeah. do yeah. B yeah. movie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> great line. Yes. Um so the end of the movie then, right? And maybe this is uh, a, a a payoff to something because we saw the head being cast mm-hmm. yes. earlier so in reality she's on the set of puritan 2 mm-hmm. right yes. and uh she's like you know finally i made it right? right and the movie ends with uh the cast is like her severed head mm-hmm. on a, so it's like her character <laughs> dies in the in the movie yeah. so i guess it's a reality check in some ways where we're like Okay, Maxine, you made it, but you know you made it to like be horror movie. And your character dies right. in it, but I suppose she, there's um, there is a cult of personality will form around her because yes. she was involved in right. And, I mean, and what did she say? I just, I just I don't want it to ever end. I don't well, want it to ever end. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I don't know because they say that that scene that they're about to shoot is a fantasy scene, mm. so I don't know that she's actually dead. Oh, okay, uh, okay, yeah. okay. But I mean. <laughs> Look how famous Gypsy Rose Blanchard is. Like she <laughs> has millions of TikTok followers just because she just got out of prison and was an accomplice to murdering her mother. Like to me, that's like the closest I can come to to like imagining that. She That'd just be needs like, a movie now. Yeah, like well, well she's they, already got a TV show. Yeah, well, like, and, oh, does she? Yeah, yeah, she has a reality TV and show. There was already yeah. a movie. There was already a movie about her. Well, yeah, yeah, the yeah, act. I that. Yeah, 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 so like, yeah, that's the closest I can like think to, but. It's fucking nuts. So Maxine yeah. has made it. Will there be a yeah. Maxine four? I, I don't. Not. I don't want to. He not. said that he had an idea, and he in May he it. apparently he said he was going to pursue it. No, don't. I don't. Oh yeah, the title of this one, Maxine, has three X's, X's triple yeah. X. Yes. Love it. Third movie. Yes, right. 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 Yeah. 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 amazing. It's, it's also her license plate. Yep, it is. Yeah. And the right. amazing title sequence that Mia oh, Goth so is <laughs> in, <laughs> in, and then right. pan down to the license it does. plate. There's certain yeah. things that you're just like that makes sense, and I like it. Yeah, and they do a lot of that in this movie. All right. 
Well, I guess uh, that means we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of the movie, whether you should watch it if we liked it. We're going to review it. But first, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you, sir. Igor, what were the 80s like? I, I'm sure he was around for it, right? <laughs> right? Even if he was what? like a spore or the something. The 1880s or the 1980s? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. He got yes. both, yeah. I'll believe. He got ripped apart in the 1880s mm-hmm. and <laughs> resurrected in the 1980s. Mm. And became a star. In the, yeah. yeah uh, and a mailman. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we want to let the good folks at home know how you can participate on this interactive portion mm-hmm. of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X at Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on threads and Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, the good MF Mad. Oh, the yeah. keeper oh, good sir. Good of sir. the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Doing the Lord's work. We are inducting three people to Ooh. the Wall of Fame Ooh. this week. Giancarlo Esposito. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey. Maximum overdrive. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Some other movie. Harley Davidson and the, the Marlboro Man. Man. Right. Okay. 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 All right. And my personal favorite, we're inducting Larry Fessenden onto the oh, Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame because we watched his movie Habit. Uh-huh. Uh, he was also in Session 9. Huh. Okay. Okay. And well, was he? Oh, yes, wow. Because, uh, yeah, he's in the movies of people that he helped, you know, right. and uh, and Maxine uh, and Toby Huss. Oh, Toby. Wow. Bravo, Toby yes. Huss. Because he was a Memorable performance, yeah. 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 And he was in Pete both. Pete? Did we watch Pete and Pete on this? Mm-hmm. He was already the strongest man in the world. Cowboys <laughs> and Aliens. Cowboys and Aliens. about that, Artie, the strongest man in the world. In the world. <laughs> oh, fucking Pete and Pete. Colin's good like, stuff. you weird, yep. weird people. Uh, Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Colin, that I was, don't that get was that. Show oh, Pete and Pete. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anybody who gets it, gets it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so about tonight's movie, Maxine, Richard Kratzer writes in and says, I love it when the Saturday Night Freak Show game is, gang escapes Igor's grasp <laughs> long <laughs> enough to go on a field trip. <laughs> Streaming movies and playing physical media is fun and serves the purpose, but there's nothing quite like watching Mia Goth and her larger-than-life character yelling and screaming like a banshee up on the big screen. Mm-hmm. I feel like she does more of the screaming like a banshee in Pearl. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's the one where she's yes, on the edge. But but yeah. she's not like she has to work up to being unhinged. Okay. Like she okay. start like she it's not at eleven way. the whole but, time. Okay. And then, that, because that's but, that as a, someone who hasn't seen Pearl, uh, that's the vibe I got. X. I I'm, I think I have to watch Pearl now yeah. based on yeah. seeing X and mm-hmm. this and all that. So I'll watch. I need it. to rewatch it. But mm-hmm. if I'm, whether we recommend this movie or not, being that it's like Hollywood based, you should see it in the theater. There yeah, you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, yay, another field trip. I started watching X the other day. Note to self, wait until the kid goes to bed next time. Yep. <laughs> since the downturn in Same comic for book this one. Mo- <laughs> since the downturn in comic book movies, I've really been looking for something I can get excited for to see in the theaters again. But I've also been saving my money to see movies in the drive-in more. Ooh. And I have a feeling this one's not going to play the drive-in. God, that's too bad because oh, it too would bad. be a yeah. good drive-in movie. That's yeah. a bummer. I've been to the drive-in forever. Yeah. yeah. It's because uh, it's all kids' movies now. I know. It's dumb. And they have playgrounds and those. Yeah, yeah, it's stupid. a different place. It's not like the drive-ins of the 80s. <laughs> am I right? Um, yeah, like in Blood Rage where people just got fucking murdered. Yeah. yeah. And selling condoms in the bathroom. Right. Yeah, exactly. Look at you, Ted Porno drive-in Rady. theaters yeah. back yeah. in the 80s. Um, Steve Carney says, Maxine was good. Not quite as good as X, but I liked it more than Pearl. That's for damn sure. I love the freak show field trips. Isn't it nice to get out of the basement every once in a while? It is. It is. Although I'm sure Igor isn't too pleased if he can't come with <laughs> you to the movies. Or maybe he likes it when you let him watch whatever in the home theater. They would have let him in this theater because it was mostly us, just us yeah, for most really of this yeah. growing. two other people there. Yeah, and yeah. I was the only person in the theater for like the first 20 minutes uh so i was just hitting my vape pen yeah because i think i saw it on a friday night yeah. and there wasn't a whole lot of people yeah. there. uh jacob law says absolutely love this movie favorite of the year so far i love the way it looks mia goth is amazing and giancarlo esposito and kevin bacon are great in their supporting roles Indeed. the soundtrack is amazing with welcome to the pleasure dome playing during the nightclub sequence that's yeah. a song by yeah. frankie goes yeah. to hollywood that's such a great song 
Uh, Kryptonian Orphan says, for the love of God, would you guys contribute to my GoFundMe account to help me pay for Mia Goss eyebrow transplant? <laughs> she is literally perfect except for that follicle, follicular, follicular, for follicular? follicular oversight. Follicular. Thank you very much. Follic- Thank you for your support. I, I, would, I stopped noticing it. Like, I think uh, I'm used to it now. I think maybe it's just like, you know, uh, do what you want. She like, has I'm, them. They're just like really blunt. They are. Yeah, very, yeah, exactly. it's like, yeah. I mean, call me crazy, but I like the imperfections that make people. Yeah. It, but it gives the, her a unique look. Right. She but a unique she's look. got, like, I would imagine she has more eyebrows in Pearl, just because I think, does she not? I, I thought I saw I her remember. from Pearl and she had more eyebrows. So. I could be wrong. She's a brunette, so I think they, yeah, yeah I think she does. Yeah. Uh, Mark Harrison says, I feel like this film was missing a scene or two to make it feel whole. I mean, I feel like something was missing, but I loved it, though. I get that. I suspect Mark is on to what I, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> felt about the end of the movie. Something. Uh, Mark Daniels 2000 says, how does this movie stack up against the great 80s horror movies that you reviewed? The latest being Friday the 13th, part five, a new beginning. <laughs> that was from the year 1985. Wow. Mm, true. Huh. Interesting. Well, I mean, go back and listen to our reviews on that one. <laughs> yeah. And, and you'll here. get a review on this one in a minute. Yeah. Yep. Uh, see Huds. What up, Chuds? Yes. Chuds. Says, with Maxine, Love Lies, Bleeding, Poor Things, and Long Legs, Kind of Kindness, The Substance, All Looking uh, Good, is this the best year for indie horror or horror-adjacent movies in some time? I think this is... I, a, they're doing they're, pretty good. I think this we're going to look back on this year as a magic year. I think this is going to be a good year for movies. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. I think so. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy, considering everyone is so worried about the wi- the writer's strike and the pandemic and there being nothing to watch, and yet we have, like, I think maybe a lot of stuff movies, right now. Right? Yeah. Well, well I think were, maybe yeah. they they um, thrive in situations like this. Yeah. Because they're scrappier and they don't, you know. Ooh, is it like, okay. Hollywood's it's buying them because we need, so, you know. Right. They're making them against Hollywood and they're just like, we'll take it. We'll buy it. We'll put it on. It, it's going to sound terrible because it's people's jobs. But like, is it like, you know, when you have to like burn down a prairie to control it and like give it a fresh start, right? There, I mean, there is something is to that. Is that kind yeah. of what is happened with like the movie industry? Is that like having a writer strike and a pandemic kind of like burnt out all the dead undergrowth and now like the it, good it can stuff's do that. coming through. It can motivate people yeah. a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or, or, or people can see it as a, the, like an opportunity. Yeah. Like the, to those who don't normally get those opportunities. Yeah. Like we, uh, we have this chance to make something and get it out there mm-hmm. because these other people aren't able to. Let's get into this right. spot but while we can. always goes on these like it's like a 20 year cycle or whatever where everything goes really made mainstream Hollywood that's yes. the big thing and then like the 90s was like the indie in a decade the 70s yep. before that in the late 60s and maybe who knows the gateway is open to... I think we're getting back into it now I think yeah. we're in that area uh, Tango and Cash was the movie <laughs> who we watched uh, two weeks ago we got nothing on blow up Oh. That, that episode just came out for, mm-hmm. for you folks it, at home. It did. But uh, Tango and Cash, uh, Travis Legler wrote in and said, fun fact, Jack Palance was hired to be in Batman because he was the only actor the producers thought could be the boss of Jack Nicholson. <laughs> yeah. And Nicholson might see as a valid threat in that movie. That makes sense. That, True or false? Legit. There you go. That makes sounds, sense. Sounds right. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, each of you, for writing you, in. Everyone. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. And now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, starting with... Sean! <laughs> what did I think about, about 2024's Maxine? Um, I think I loved it. Uh, mm. I think I was uh, very entertained by this movie. I think it's the best out of... I'll go back and watch Pearl. I can't imagine it taking the place of this one, but I think this is my fa- it's going to end up being my favorite out of this trilogy. I think it's Mia Goth's best performance out of... Uh, I'm going to say out of all of them, even though I haven't seen Pearl. I'll go watch Pearl. Um, but uh, uh, to, to, to draw me into a movie, like this has pretty much got everything. Like uh, it's set in L.A. Ooh, love it. Uh, it's set on the back lots of Hollywood. Oh, mm-hmm. count me in. Uh, like it, it's it's just it's in the 80s. Oh, OK. Twist my arm. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's got so much. It's a horror movie. Um, it's 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 a giallo there for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's uh, just it's I really I, I really the, the, the score or the soundtrack really so good. good. Like really yeah. not only really good, but really good in moments where it needed to be good. I keep mm-hmm. going back to the St. Elmo's Fire key punching <laughs> scene. Mm-hmm. Kevin Bacon loved it. Um, so good. Uh, Wait, I, is it Laura Brannigan sing Self Control? I said Pat. Benatar. I have no idea. Okay, I, probably. I don't think there's Pat Benatar, <laughs> no, but yeah, I, it's I Laura Brannigan. I don't think it's Pat, Pat Benatar. 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 But yeah. uh, like uh, every actor doing great. Uh, mm-hmm. Giancarlo Esposito, love you. You're doing wonderful things in this movie. Kevin Bacon is 
is at his sleaziest, drawliest best in this. Again, he's got so much of this. He is growing into character acting, I think, very well. And he it's in he's presenting it in, in, in spades in this movie. I just love his run around Hollywood because it's you know, it's it's that old man like, ooh, I gotta catch up, but I'm old and I'm mm-hmm. out of breath and and uh, he's doing great. Mia Goth is just great in this movie. Like I believe her every step of the way and everything she says, like her, her motivating factors that she says out loud, I feel in the character when she's not saying them, which uh, I think, which is great. They kind of cast uh, a, a really a, a well-known cast for this movie. Um, the Again. Yeah. The only thing that is maybe a, a minor thing is that third act is a little, it's probably the weakest part of the movie, but I, I'm not going to nitpick at it because I love so much of the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Bobby Cannavale and Michelle Monaghan as the FBI agents love them. They're doing great. Michelle Monaghan gets stabbed in the eye with a crucifix and just mm-hmm. stumbles down a Hollywood Hill at a certain point. <laughs> just like, Oh, like uh, I cared about these characters. Um, I, I really wanted to, you know, figure out what, what, everything that was going on. It's set on a backdrop of true crime with the, uh, uh, with the what, with the Night Stalker and everything, like this is everything. I, like if you listed all this shit out and said, "Do you want to watch this movie?" I'd be like, "Fuck yeah, I want to watch this it's movie." Like, what are are you, what are your favorite things? Let's <laughs> put them all in right. a movie. Like, do you want them all in a movie? I'd be like, "Yes, I do." And I I got that again. There's some weaknesses here and there, but I think everyone's doing Elizabeth Debicki just great. She's so love good. it. She's, She's so killing good. it throughout this. Um, I I leaned over to Holly partway through this movie. And I'm like, I think it's. I bet it's her. I you bet did. she's the killer. <laughs> but I think they're kind of pushing that way because she's always like, well, I guess we've all got blood on our hands yeah. now. She like, she's she got a few lines and a few things in this that could lead her to that. But um, yeah, had a really good time with it. I don't, you know, I, I've seen some reviews online about this, um, uh, which I think get real nitpicky. But I, I think uh, across the board, I think there's just a good time to be had with Maxine. It's hitting that sweet spot. Again, it's 1985, right in the middle of the 80s. We, I, I love that era. I think we love that era. Just being down here at the year. freak show. Mm-hmm. Holly will always say it's a good year. She's, <laughs> if you don't know, she was born in that year, ladies and I gentlemen. Was. I was. And so that's why she keeps saying it. Um, yeah, just enjoyed it from front to back. Uh, audible reactions. Dude gets his nuts squashed. In his head. Like, oh. just... just it's going to make you feel some stuff. Um, and again, in, in times when I've said I've seen too many horror movies that it detracts from a movie I've seen, I've seen a lot of horror movies where it adds to a movie yeah. I've seen. Mm-hmm. And this, yeah. it adds to this movie. Um, so I enjoyed it a lot. I had a really good time with it. Um, it makes me want to go back and revisit Ty West's filmography, certain things. So I want to, I'm interested in that. Um, I can yeah. confirm at one point, Sean was literally sitting at the edge of his seat. Yeah, he okay, was. Okay, my back hurt, so I was just kind of <laughs> moving forward. But I did stay that way just because I'm like, all right, we're getting to the end of the movie. I'm just going to sit yeah. here and see what happens. So yes, I was sitting there going, huh, all right, give me what you got. Um, and they gave it to me and I really liked it. So mm-hmm. I am definitely going to recommend Maxine. Um one of my favorites of the year and it's, it's mm-hmm. going to end up on a list somewhere. I hope it ends up on lists for other people mm-hmm. as, as one of the better movies of this year. So yes, mm-hmm. I recommend it. I really enjoyed it. You should watch it. Holly, what did you think of Maxine? Um, yeah, no, I think you, I think you nailed it. There's, there's so much to like about this movie. It's, it's got that, it's got like a, a genuine eighties. Yeah. Not feel. that fake eighties shit. The, yeah, that it's not you like can fucking feel. stranger things. Like yeah. this is a yeah. real, like that real eighties vibe. Yeah. And I loved it so much. The, the music is perfect. It's so good. Do you think, do you think they were really tempted to put something from Footloose in here? Because Kevin Bray, <laughs> oh, I feel like, oh, I bet they thought of it. I feel like they really wanted to, I bet but they like, thought we can't, of it. we can't, but that would have been great. Um, <laughs> maybe just like, let's hear it from the boy. Something. Yeah. Just like, right, seriously. Yeah, not, yeah, something like a, a, a B-side, a yeah. B-side of Footloose. You yes. don't have to do Kenny Loggins. Right. right yeah. Something. Anyway. Um, no, <laughs> just I, flipping through a radio station. Yeah. You hear it a little bit. Yeah. Just, yeah. just a little, just a smidge. But no, I thought this movie was so much fun. It was, it's, it's so like it, it pulled me in as soon as the movie started. I was just pulled in and mm-hmm. I was just gripped the whole way through. Um, like Sean said, the third act, there's problems, but they had me so much from the rest of it that I was just like, all right, let's coast. Let's get there. Yeah. But I loved everything I just saw. So I'm not so mad. I'm not so mad about it. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. when the reveal was like, it's her dad. I was like, oh. I mean, all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Let's do it. Whatever. <laughs> so, like, I didn't love it. I didn't. The third act has its problems, but I just watched so much other good stuff that I loved so much. There's, I, I made a note. There is a line in this. Well, it's like a, it's a chunk. I'm going to read it. 
<laughs> it's um from the director when she's talking to Maxine and she's telling her like to get rid of the distractions. I love this so much. She says, do you want a bit of free advice? Look around you. You've made it to the belly of the beast. Congratulations. Very few come this far. To stay here, you must make it your obsession. Eliminate all distractions because if you take your eye off that prize, even for a moment, the beast will spit you right back out where you came from. And may never get a taste of you again. Yes. Ooh, that's the, such the, a good they, line. The may never get a taste for you again yeah. line. Just like, ooh. When she said yeah. that, I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, I fuck. really want to write that down, but I don't want right. to my phone out. Mm-hmm. Like, right. oh, it was so good. That's what I was looking up before. I was like, some I need to find that quote. good lines in this oh, movie. some good lines. Mm. I love that. I love when a horror movie has good dialogue. Yeah. That just, yeah. oh, that tickles me. Yeah, that's I what I want. I love it so much. This, like, it's a good movie. Like it is a good movie. Like there's schlock. There's there's an homage to so many different horror like geniuses. I mean, we've got Hitchcock references. There's there's Jalo vibes all over the place. Like it's just it's so it's such a love letter to Hollywood in the eighties. And it was it was so good. I loved it so much. So I'm gonna forgive the third act and say it's fantastic and you should definitely see it. Colin, what'd you think? Uh yeah, I think I've seen all the movies that Ty West has seen. So he's <laughs> right? I don't know how old he is really, but it he's, seems like he's He said 1980 on his so 40. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. So he's yeah. like seeing uh, it's like he is playing to the like I'm the audience. Yes. Mm-hmm. For the stuff that that he makes and I love that about like everything that he's done is, you know. Um Listening to you guys talk about the movie has, you know, shown me, I guess I have a better uh, f- appreciation for it now than I did maybe even going into this discussion, because I remember when I was watching it, yes, I mean, you know, the aesthetic is is fantastic, uh, the soundtrack, the vibe, the atmosphere, the performances, you know, but I remember that sensation of like, as we were going through it, kind of going like okay there's a bunch of scenes but we haven't really moved in a in a certain direction and then there were scenes where i was like you know are they paying off what's kevin bacon doing here and i guess you know uh it did feel like his character was there because it was scripted to be there more than mm-hmm. he had like you know it's yes. like well, I'm, more so than I'm his character paid, and motivation mm-hmm. you yeah. know then if you if you if if that's what you know we're deciding on um, I hope he's getting paid a lot. There was the scene uh, with her, because it was such a centerpiece, her getting the um, facial cast, mm-hmm. that I'm like, okay, this is Chekhov's you know, fake head that's going to show up in the end where somebody <laughs> shoots at her and they're like, we got her. Ah. And then it turns out that it's a fake head from, you know, whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then I can see that, there yeah. was no payoff to that. Um, and then, yeah, the third act really did kind of let me down because I think of what I explained, that it like Maxine doesn't become... The driving force in yeah. her own thing because yeah. we set her up as like she's an anti-hero, right? Mm-hmm. We're quoting stuff from the movie that's very like inspirational mm-hmm. things, but it's basically this like very cynical uh, pursuit of stardom because that's what's important at at all other costs. I mean, yeah. she, she's really good at it, yeah. <laughs> but it's like you know, I guess maybe that's what you know Ty West has been going with with all three of these movies. It's like mm-hmm. that pursuit of becoming somebody mm-hmm. you know and it doesn't matter what wreckage you lay it, it well, that's what, what, what is it do to people and what do you do to people to get there yeah mm-hmm. yeah but she's a badass you know in getting that single-minded determination to uh to get what she wants what's that line that he says in the morgue like all you girls want to be famous but you don't realize you're more likely to be infamous or mm-hmm. something like right that. when yeah. he's pointed the dead body yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. But she doesn't give a shit. No, yeah. she to her it doesn't oh. matter. Yeah, she's right. like it's not she's, me. Yeah, right. And she got herself this far. And right, she's like, yeah. I did it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I will keep going. Ultimately, I like the movie. Yeah. Uh, you know the the problems that I have with it be damned. I think the cumulative effect of it was uh, uh, better than yep. the uh, the the negatives, and I was mm-hmm. actually kind of surprised because I, mm-hmm. I haven't read on this one anything. Uh, maybe the critics are, were fond of it. There was I have, you were, yeah, you were, I have no idea what anybody it. thinks. Kayla was movie. telling me that like there were a bunch so of a lot negative... of people are disappointed. Okay, yeah. so yes. I'm curious to hear. Yeah, a lot of people about call that. it messy as well, well as what I've heard. Yeah, well, I'll get into it. Yeah. you know, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna pin it on that. The fact fact that she isn't the author of her own the ending of the so. movie yeah. they feel in a subconscious kind of way and that's why they're having a negative opinion of it but yeah. uh i thought overall uh you should see maxine mm-hmm. uh, i i'm gonna i'm gonna go with i liked x the best 
Maxine too, and then Pearl. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Michaela, we will take us home. Uh, let's talk about managing expectations. <laughs> um, because I saw well. two movies this weekend. I saw Maxine for a second time. I saw Long Legs. And both these movies, the hype train has been building for, what, a year? Yeah. Yep. A year. It's been a while. Let's yeah. stop doing this. Let's stop setting <laughs> ourselves up for failure. And let's just maybe be like, I'm going to have a good time with the movies. Exactly. End of story. Um, I, I feel like that's how I've been going to the movies lately. Yeah. I'm like, it's working. Yeah. That's, but, I, that's what I've been trying to do. Yeah. Ignore everything. Because before that, I've been like, I'm going to read up on everything before I go into this minute. I'm trying yeah. to yeah. ignore shit. Um, yeah. and I Take see, the movie as it is. Yes. See, that's what I'm trying to that's do. That's what you got to do. I see a lot of the same reactions to Long Legs that I'm seeing to Maxine is that they're disappointing because people, because like, I mean, especially with Long Legs, it's been like, it's the scariest movie since X or whatever, you know, like the pull quote. Uh, yeah. machine for yes. both of these movies has not helped and it didn't help that like I feel like the internet was following the making of Maxine every step of the way too being like Ty West start shooting this week and then this right. it's like guys let's just like forget about it for a little bit and then when the movie's done we don't like when you have to know everything about every step of the movie leading up to it, you've it's like you've already watched it. So right. your expectations in a certain place. And you we know? get that a lot with movie news and everything. Too much like, information. I'm, right. I'm guilty of it myself, yeah. just following everything right. and wanting to know about all this right. stuff. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so manage your expectations and maybe you'll have a better time yeah. because I feel like for me, like I, this third act does have problems. And I think you guys nailed it when you said it's because her agency is completely taken away, which is yeah. frustrating because yeah. it doesn't match up with that character. Yeah. I agree. Right. I think that's the most valid criticism of this movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think that, you know, it is annoying that it's a relative because it's always a relative. <laughs> but when you think about this movie, it's like, the well, all the other characters screen. are dead. Yeah. So who else could it be? Yeah. You know, right. Um, the thing is, as a woman, we don't get a ton of horror movies where I have characters to grab onto that aren't final girls. Mm-hmm. And I know technically she's the final girl of X, but I like that. Like, we don't have a female Freddy Krueger or a female Michael Myers. We don't have anything like that. So I have to, my Maxine is what I've got, you know, <laughs> like Maxine and Pearl, like Ty West has done more for, you know, yeah. those kinds of characters in his trilogy than she's anything so else. Cool. Yeah. She's so cool. She dresses like in a way that I feel like is attainable for me. Like, I feel like I could buy the clothes from this movie and wear them. Like she feels relatable. She is not perfect. She's flawed, obviously. And like fame at all costs. And like, I don't care who I have to step on to get there, but oh, Colin, who's nuts I have to step on. Who's nuts there. I have yeah. to step on. Colin, this movie, you know, we talked about angel and I want to go on the record saying I was wrong about angel. It's a great movie. I should have recommended it when we watched it. But this has this a similar type of sleaze factor. I think this movie is La La Land for people that are sleazy, like for sleazy people. Because <laughs> like, like, <laughs> it's like it's porn stars. It just, it just needed a, a musical number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, but it is very funny. much like the Hollywood struggle, but from the sleazy side, right? That's funny. And it that's your pull. Quote. Yeah, that it's La La Land oh. for sleaze. It's like, yeah, and it. You know, it's definitely not perfect, but it's an original story, you know, be, it's, it's it's a sequel, but whatever. I don't know. It's I a real it. story drawing on a lot yeah. of previous stuff, but it's still, yeah. And I do like that Ty West puts his influence in the movies, but it's not like characters name checking movies. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes. And I'm glad yeah. it's and not like that. that body a- double sequence, if that's what it was. Yeah. It's so sideways. Yeah. That it's not a direct lift, right? Right. right. You know? And the only way it gets direct is uh, is the uh, the video store character kind of name checking a few things in that, but that right. is as far as it goes. But it God. stops after that scene. It, stops, it doesn't yes. become a thing because it very easily could it have. Could have. I did appreciate the the weird little nugget of her being like, "Can you tell me anything about this VHS type?" And him naming all the brands of VHS tapes right. and stuff. I was like, "Okay." If and he named it. I'm like, "I know TDK. Right. I, know, I know. I know all these names. Right. <laughs> I know. I could see like I collected the out- them. The I brown could- casing of all. Yeah, yeah. I could see the artwork for them. Yep. Like." Right. On them yeah. when he said that, yeah. yeah, it's no. I had a great time with it, and I, I, I kind of hate that people are dogging on it as much as they are because, like, guys, we are being fucking spoiled this year. You all shut the fuck up and enjoy it, and uh, otherwise, we might not get it again. It's right. kind of how I it feel. It was like, just real bad. Yeah, like enjoy the shit. Yeah, we're <laughs> like, well, like, yeah. Why are don't we... ignore obvious glaring flaws in movies and everything, but right. enjoy it a little more. But it, it just feels like the internet has no room for gray area. It's either it's the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. And there's no nuance in like, it was a mostly successful movie except for a few scenes. You know, it's hard mm-hmm. to find that kind of nuance. It's okay to have nuance. I, I, the internet is not a place for nuance. I just, I don't know what people expected that were disappointed in this movie other than like, yeah, you know, we talked about the issues with the third right, act. Right, right. But it's not, I don't know. I felt like it delivered on what the trailer told me, you know? Right? So, and that's what I'm judging it against. I had a great time. I can't wait to see what Ty West does next or what Mia Goth does next. Yeah. Um, I love them together. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Definitely recommend it. Go see it. Support movies like this if you want more of them. That's, yeah. All right, that means yeah. it's freak show approved. Yeah. That means, that means, oh, that means what are you doing? Stop listening and go. <laughs> go see I, it. I think we add a fourth X to Maxine. Yeah. That is the, <laughs> that is the freak all of show us right. stamp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for sticking with us this long then. Uh, next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Colin. What are we watching next week? You're right. This did go long. Uh, hour and 37. That's the longest oh, one we've done in a long yeah. time. Like as long as the movie. Yeah. I don't know how what are we watching yeah. next week, Colin? All right. This one's going to be tough for you folks at home because oh. you probably can't even find oh, this. Okay. Oh. Play it on TC. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said it was content wise. Like, oh, it's like, it's going to be yeah. tough. Yeah. It's like, yeah. no, it's... why? We've had two good weeks, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a movie that I found that I thought was interesting mm. and no one has seen it. And hopefully people will uh, okay. try and track it down. This right. is the first movie filmed in dual vision, but don't worry. You won't need need glasses it's called wicked wicked okay. oh i don't know never heard this. of this yeah I, no I one has heard of this movie okay. unless you watch a lot of turner classic movies i guess that's wicked the only way to find it all right, it. Okay. <laughs> all right well we'll okay. talk about it from the year 1973 okay, Ooh, okay. All, right. all right so that's awesome. next week on the saturday night freak show we hope you'll join us and until then ladies and germs the basement is going dark